construction complete. No construction options. Building. Construction complete. No construction options. Building. Training. Construction complete. May I assist you? I can help you. Your wishes. Who are we firing at next? Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Building capture. Let's get out there. Construction Looks clear. complete. Training. Building. We've got the rockets. It's ready. Construction complete. New construction options. Training. Building. Construction complete. New construction options. Insufficient funds. Let's go to the crystal. Need more. Tiberium is the answer. No Mercy is for the weak. See the future. It is time for a harvest. Let's gather all the characters. Time for questioning. Is all crystals are cold. Building on hold. Cancelled. Building. Cancelled. On patrol.
<clears throat> Greetings! Oh, what is up and a very warm welcome to the channel. The sun is relentlessly, incandescently, ragingly shining. And the magpie is far more pleasantly, I hope, casting. Um, it's a hot one. Jesus. You know, um... It was like 32 degrees yesterday, and uh, the weather continues to be absolutely incandescent. In fact, you know what? There is no chance of me being able to get through this stream without a fan. <laughs> so, um, just one second. I'm going to quickly go and get my fan. Mag magpie. To find a fan woman. Okay, I'm just going to go and grab a fan, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, take two. Jesus. God damn, it's so hot. Okay, um, first of all, of course, uh, this, is not the, this is not the time that I said I would be casting earlier on in the week, um, but I did put a post out on Twitter and on the YouTube and everywhere that I could, um, just saying that uh, unfortunately I forgot I already have plans this evening, so uh, I'll be casting at midday today, <laughs> and that's what's happening right now. Um, so, yep. Um, Sorry for the disruption to the schedule, but these things do happen sometimes, and luckily I'm going to be casting now, so for those of you, I suppose, who are signing in at the uh, at 1700 GMT and finding that there's uh, nothing going on, well, at least you can catch the VOD either on Twitch or over at youtube.com slash magpie842. What's up, Sarava, Philharmonic12? Good to see you guys in chat. Thanks very much for showing out at this random time. Oh, man. Are you guys in Europe? It is like, whew, it's pretty hot here at the moment. Whew. Oh man. Oh my God. It was like, it was like 25 degrees, like all last night as well. It's like, Jesus. We, we it's, whew. I can handle some hot climate stuff. Believe me. I really can. But it just feels weird when it's happening in England. It's like something has gone wrong here. <laughs> anyway. Bear with me. We're just, uh, yeah, I don't have air conditioning either. In fact, completely the opposite, Swarava. My house is built like a heat trap, which like 80% of the time is great because England's really cold and it's raining and it's just rubbish. But when the weather's like this, it's like, even with all the windows open and trust, they're open. I don't even get that much breeze. Like it's, it's tough out here for a magpie. But I can hardly complain. I've got this fan here next to me. That's going to be helping out as we're loading in onto our first game of Company of Heroes 2 here. <laughs> Woo! Damn. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're just about ready. <sighs> Trouble is, of course, it's so hot that I, didn't, I haven't really been sleeping very well for the last two nights, so I'm just like... <sighs> and I'm spending most of my day, like, in the sun, so I'm like... <sighs> but, um, anyway. <clears throat> Our game is now loaded up, so without further ado, let us jump into this fine game featuring Spawning in the West playing as the Ostia pieces. It's going to be Ruka ACL's Nagano, Nagano. There we go. A little bit of a little bit of a lag there, but yeah, going to be playing as the Ostrapin Vermacht here and Spawning in the East. It is uh, a player who I don't know by this screen name at least. It was going to be the United States Forces of Frozen Mouth. Now, top rated game on the ladder, a game with Nagano, I'm seldom going to pass up. So uh, I'm hoping that this Frozen Mouth is of the caliber to offer a challenge to Nagano, who we've seen be utterly ruthless and stronger than ever, seemingly, in recent times on the channel. So that is quite the compliment where Nagano is concerned, but deserved, because uh, taking some sick wins out and about. So, yep, we're going to... We're going to get another chance to investigate an Ostrapen build piloted by a top-tier 
Vermax Maestro. Frozen mouth is orange pest. Aha, thank you, Swarava. Well, that explains that then. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the info there. Wow, rifleman actually in a good building. Start picking down this MG42. That's pretty annoying, to be honest. Oh no! And then other riflemen are going to slip in on the bad on the bad side of the uh, arc, and the MG42 is going to have to GTFO. And without the MG42, the Ostrapen are not the best. Um, wow, he's actually going to leave the building to close the distance and use those Garands at close range. Interesting call there from Orange Pest. Uh, gets the win against those pioneers, and now he can come in here and try to beat down these Ostrapen. They have a lot more HP, and now the models are falling off these riflemen. Okay, now we have to call it on this, don't we, Orange Pest? There we go. Uh, it's going to be a recon company uh, build here from Orange Pest, so the sort of alternate, sort of off-brand airborne company, in a way. Uh, going to have access to the Greyhounds, Kolodny Farm, of course. Uh, one of the, probably the smallest possible medium-sized map, along with Crossing in the Woods, for my money. It is. It does feel bigger than... Langriskaya, Crossroads, um, Fame and Ville Approach. Um, you do have to make some decisions about where you send your units. They can't be everywhere at once. You've, you've essentially got three lanes to think about covering. North, south, and mid. So the Greyhound, the mobility on that one can be very useful. Oh, we're seeing raid tactics. A use there. 40 munitions being cooked off. And that's going to enable American forces to capture faster, I believe. Light vehicles. Oh. So that was a misclick. Oh. That's... That must have been a misclick. Increases the sight range of infantry? Huh. Um, maybe he just wanted the increased sight range for a bit of scouting? I don't know. That seems like an odd way to spend 40 munitions at that point in the game, if I'm honest. Um, Lieutenant going to be the tech of choice here for Orange Pest. <laughs> Possibly intending to go for a Stuart. Um, we have seen oftentimes US players do seem to go for the mechanized company command post and then get the Stuart, even if they have access to the Greyhound, which always confuses me a little bit, but you do get the Stuart out faster that way. Um, and Stuart Greyhound is fine. It is fine. It just seems a little awkward to spend fuel teching to have access to a light vehicle that is similar, that, 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 that is comparable to the Greyhound. I know they're not identical. I know they do different amounts of damage to different targets and have different armor and HP pools and different abilities, but they are broadly light vehicles with turret. And as this game gets through its early stages, it does appear like we're seeing the pretty typical Ostrapen sort of build come out here. We've got Panzergrenz coming out earlier rather than later here. Sometimes you see German players go up to three, um, three Ostrapens before going for those Panzergrenadiers. But now the Panzergrenadiers will be here. Looks like uh, they're going to try and come around here to flank around behind these US forces. Oh, the MG42 gets cut out, uh, gets caught out again here. Actually, Greyhound on the on the build now. No, wait. Is that a utility car? Wow. I had almost forgotten that the utility car was in the game. It feels like I almost never see it these days. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Wow, we're going to see a utility car build coming out here. Okay, I mean, as far as I know, the utility car is still a great unit. Uh, Ostrapen here, looking to try and come in and abuse the cutoff point here. Unlikely that they're going to be able to get it. Rear Ash on the intercept. Going to put pay to those Ostrapen, send them packing for now. Utility car, taking the field. Utility car, taking the field. And it's going to be a utility car versus a 2-2-2 going to be defining the later stages of this early game. Panzergrenadiers will poke through and grab the cutoff, and that is kind of a massive cutoff to be grabbing now. The utility car coming out just in the nick of time to shove these guys off, and hopefully... Do oh, yep, it does get cut off. There we go, the value is gained. Nagano going to pull those Panzergrenadiers back immediately. Nothing more to be gotten here. And that's annoying. A few seconds of considerably disrupted income there, but uh, the damage going to be repaired almost as fast as possible here for Orange Pest or Frozen Mouth. A point is under 
And a fairly respectful early game here, it seems. Neither player committing any massive errors, neither player over committing. Um, they're both just going to be navigating their way safely and securely on here. 2 2 2 finds the utility cart, will force a smoke. So that's a nice pickup. How much is the smoke on the utility cart? That is 30 munitions. All right, wow. That's a nice pickup. And for those of you who are wondering, later on in the cast, uh, we will be finishing with a Deserts of Karak game. Well, maybe finishing, but certainly later on in the cast, we'll be having a Deserts of Karak game. We've got, we've got a replay loaded up and ready to go there. So that should be quite exciting. It's been a while since I've cast any Deserts of Karak, and what a game that is. Speaking of games that are, what a game. If, uh, if you joined me just now earlier on, whilst I was just in the sort of pre-stream couple of minutes there, I was playing some Kane's Wrath. Just just a quick skirmish, really, just to warm up my hands, ready, ready for streaming, but... What a game that has been. I've been enjoying the hell out of Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath. Still, as far as I know, in the Steam sale, heavily discounted, 50%. And uh, just a fantastic RTS. I'm having so much fun playing that with friends. All right. So the utility car going to come in here, try and provide a bit of cover for these retreating riflemen. The 222, of course, more than a match for that one. And it will be a Stuart here. Interesting. Nagano getting off to quite a good, decent start here. Good amounts of field control, map presence, getting that cut off. Trailing in the scoreline just slightly, but that's okay. And I think the resource differential probably has been favoring Nagano. Is that a thing that we can get a grasp, graph for? Graphs, resource float. Oh, we can only get resource float. What we want is income, not float. <laughs> that would be a useful graph to have. All right, 222 going to find the utility car once again. The Stuart probably, yeah, just on its way now to try and intervene. And Nagano just sitting happy on two squads of Ostrapen. Interesting. I think I do prefer three, especially on a map that's a little bigger like this. But we do have double Panzer Grenadier out a little faster, and we do have double Pioneer, actually, so... It's a fine roster for sure. Who am I to who am I to criticize? I was thinking the other day actually, has anyone ever just decided to go full Ostrapen? I mean really take advantage of the fact that Ostrapen don't cost much and just go like five squads or six squads. How much unit cap are Ostrapens? Six. Just just go full Ostrapen. I suppose it's probably terrible because once you get countered, you get really, really badly countered. But I mean they just seem so good. For the money, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised we don't often see like players with four squads or more sometimes, because they're just so good. It's the Fausts that get me. It still is the Fausts that get me. How, how they are the best Fausting squad in the game is just like, boom, crazy. So Utility Car and Stuart and Greyhound. Wow, a real light vehicle style going to be showcased here from Orange Pest or Frozen Mouth here. So I'm really excited to see what the combination of the three US light vehicles can bring here. This is for sure going to be a lot of mobile firepower, and it's going to be making life hell for these German forces. MG42 caught out, will probably get taken out. Ooh, Nagano, that's not one we wanted to give away, and give away he probably will. That hardware likely to fall into US hands here. Massive move out, though, of Panzer Grenadiers and Pioneers actually ought to address that. Faust is going to tag this Stuart, which actually finds itself in considerable jeopardy here. Uh, although, there is still no pack gun. It is just the 222 for actual AT. Although, it's functional, with, but the engine's broken. So, additional Faust hitting the Stuart. The utility car continuing to carve into these German units. Many of them having to fall back now. And I think when the dust settles, this has been an okay poke for Orange Pest. Hang on now, though. The Stuart's sort of getting stalked down. The Faust on these uh, Ostrapen four munitions away from being able to be cast uh, the the utility car gonna oh sorry this has been the greyhound the whole time sorry the utility car coming in over here uh, casting smoke to try and save the Stuart. the ostrapen's getting shoved around and the faust will come through it does connect and that's a beautiful kill for nagano and with the demise of the Stuart, that actually they did that entire ex exchange now definitely favors the german forces so that was nicely nicely found by nagano to get that faust onto the Stuart. and with the Stuart gone that is a lot of the wind out of the sails here for Frozen Mouth. And 
that's a difficult place to be. Let's have a look. Going to be getting a 50 cal. Going to be replacing the 222 for Nagano. Now, good amounts of control are still taken. I mean, the, the utility car and the Greyhound are still up over here. So he's going to be able to at least deny fuel for now. Uh, so that's a, that's that's one productive thing that Frozen Mouth has gotten done with this so far. As the German force is now reinforced, going to move on out. 222, once again supporting. But that 222 has to be careful with the utility car and the Greyhound still out. It's very easy to lose a 222. There is also a Zook on that Lieutenant as well. Panzer Grenadier is going to be making the most use of their uh, mechanized, what's it called, combined arms passive there. That's pretty cool. Has the 222 going to be buffing them? Aren't Panzer Grenadiers really cool? Isn't this game in just a great spot? It's so cool. Community balance team really do smash it out the park. They... I sort of think that community balance teams actually just might be the way forwards. Like, every RTS, as far as I know, that has been balanced by a decent community balance team is just in the best arrest of shape. Like, it's just crazy. Um, I wonder if moving forwards, there ought to just be, you know, RTS designers ought to just incorporate some community interaction and or community responsibility for balancing games going forwards. Like, what if, when Homeworld 3 released, after three months of it being out, an official community balance sort of squad were nominated by uh, by BBI, whose considerations would be taken in, or maybe they'd even be given direct control, like in Company of Heroes 2, over modding the game. Like, that would just be such a healthy thing. So, okay, German forces pushing forwards now, applying some victory point pressure... And that is nice to have, trailing by about, what, 70, 60 tickets right now. So good to catch back up in terms of the scoreline. This American roster, despite the loss of a Stewart, still pretty pokey, to be honest. Pack gun getting mixed in at last for Nagano. I really like that. Plenty of targets for that one. Where's that MG42? Wow, okay, firing from this position. Able to get a suppress on those riflemen, very nice. Forces two, two squads of riflemen back. And is it just me or is, our, is Orange Pest actually having difficulty finding good fights on the map at the moment? For all this American might, it's actually been quite difficult. Just kind of getting deflected by MGs, Ostrapons, and Panzer Grenadiers here. And giving away a lot of value. Here it comes again. Raid tactics is used once again. So this is to allow the utility car down in south to grab a victory point. So that's pretty spicy. Nice to see some utility out of this ability. Infantry also going to be doing some work here in north. And the Greyhound and the 222 going to have a little showdown here. But both players being super respectful with their micro. And nobody over committing or diving. So this is looking good. This is looking like a pretty high-level game so far. Nice to see. MG42 catching a number of American squads under arc here. It's pretty annoying for Orange Pest, who is probably going to have to fall them back. The Greyhound will acquire the 222 once again, but there's a Faustable squad here in support lurking around the corner. So Faust is going to connect onto that Greyhound. Uh, the Cluster Mines will come down here, though. Oh, no, look, the Ostrapen actually want a piece of this. They're going to come in looking for another Faust. How how good is it that Ostrophon just get Fausts, by the way? Like, look how game-changing it has been in this example of a game. The Ostrophon Faust has killed a Stuart and successfully managed to a large extent. Oh! Ho, ho! I mean, that, that kill came off the back of an Ostrophon Faust again. Yeah, it's the pack gun that claims the trophy, but... These Ostrophon with Fausts are super strong, man. I'm not 100% I'm not convinced that, that they should have Fausts as freely as they do because they're just so strong in so many other regards it just seems like a little too much icing on that cake that's my feeling here's the major and 50 fuel in the tank right now for the US player so we're not a million miles away from seeing a fuel choice but it will be some time let's just check the tech here for our Axis player Battle Phase 2 is just now on the queue and so we'll see almost certainly a Panzer 4 moving forwards um, Axis players definitely back in love with that tank 
Look at this three-star utility car. What does it actually get? Lay mines quickly, is detect camouflage units more effectively. Armor piercing rounds increases penetration and range. On top of increased maneuverability at two-star vet and greater sight range of that one. Wow, yeah, the utility car definitely gets some strong veterancy. Those AP rounds with the increased penetration and damage, sorry, and range um, at three-star vet sound pretty spicy. Is 222 going to get an overrun here and do some work as German units are being prolific in mid and south and north, actually. I wonder if Orange Pest's position isn't becoming a little bit too compacted here. This is starting to look a little bit worrisome. Panzer Grenadiers, the fullback coming down a touch late. They should be okay. Wow, the utility car will chase. And there are actually no Ostrapen immediately in the hood here, so... <gasps> but it was all a bait, the t t t t t mines. Oh, man. Hey, Pineapple Fruit. Apparently, the USF player is Orange Pest. Wow. The Telemine. Jesus. And it's, I think it's fair to say, despite the uh, despite trailing in the scoreline, the, the fights have just looked a little bit better for Nagano, haven't they? Not much. It's not been like, oh, my God, he's whooping his ass. Like, no, we're miles away from that. But uh, picking off that Stuart was the, was the crucial exchange earlier on. And now picking off that utility car on a Telemine is... The crucial exchange of the last few minutes. So just eking out a little bit more value here and pushing across all fronts, doing a really good job of controlling the resources is Nagano. Not so much controlling the victory points, but that's okay. They're not as important for the first 20 minutes of the game. If you can just stay close in the scoreline, as long as you're not giving up a massive advantage, you can prioritize the resources if you need to. And uh, support armor core is now finished. Enough fuel in the tank left over in the bank. For a Panzer IV, and I, it, it almost certainly will be a Panzer IV. I can't see what would be bad about a Panzer IV here. Enemy are and territory. then the table looks set for Nagano to start dominating. I think a Panzer IV is actual difficulties for this American roster. We don't have any M1 AT guns. In fact, we never got Captain Our Tech. Um, so, and this is not regular Airborne Company. This is Recon Company. So we can't just call in uh, anti-tank guns. Airdropped pack howitzer against double pack. Good suggestion, Philharmonic. That's nice. And don't they come with some paratroops? Yeah. Okay, has he got weapon racks? It doesn't look like it. Oh. We are losing a sector. oh, he does have weapon racks. Okay, cool. Yeah, then I really like I really like going for the pack howitzer call in now. So 380 uh, manpower, 80 munitions. And then I then I reckon you kind of put the zooks on the paratroopers because you do... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nagano picks up a rifleman squad. That was nicely done. That's what we like to see. That, that Bundaroo grenade was on point. Baraku Friday Bundaroo grenade. And... Uh, Oh, that's right. Recon powers do have the upgrade. Thanks, Pineapple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget that. Yeah, so I would I would like that. The pack howitzer, we've seen it dominate recently on the channel. It's in such a good place, which is great because I feel like it's basically been a non-unit for years, so it's nice to see it actually have a place. Whoops, touch awkward. I think it's Sherman there going to crush the heavy cover that that 50 cal was using, but uh, that's fine. So a Sherman here. It's going to be a medium tank showdown, which, of course, in a vacuum, will favor the Panzer IV. When you take into account the sporting units, I actually think the Panzer IV is heavily favored because it's going to be assisted by double pack gun and uh, these Ostrapen, who have been pretty on point with their Fausts. So, oh no, the Telemines. Not again, Nagano. Not again. Not twice in one game. We can't, we can't, be, getting, we can't be getting this much value out of Telemines. I'll lose my mind. Please no. Actually, there's still no metal detector on the roster for Orange Pest, so... God, this is some brave Sherman maneuvering, I've got to say, to be honest. He is a whisker away from disaster. Now, the Panzer IV is going to catch up to the Sherman, and this is important. There's also fighting going on in the middle of the map, so keep an eye on the minimap for what's going on there. Zooks on the Major are going to be doing some work here. Ooh, the Panzer IV getting a bit close to those uh, Telemines, and the Sherman desperately duking, but yeah, the Panzer IV just has the positioning there. Gets into the rear armor, and that's going to be a pretty easy pickup for the German Panzer there. And my goodness, aren't Panzer IVs looking good in the meta at the moment? Is it any wonder that Vermax are presently the ascendant German team? And look at this direction here. 
He's going to be just reversing along here to try and pick up the Major with the Zook, which it will be quite a nice kill. The Pintle Mount MG42 blazing away. And this is likely to be another squad wipe. Um, yep, that's a squad wipe. And oh dear, actually, there's even more squads here available to be picked up, perhaps. Looks like the Panzer IV are going to sneak away for now. Now, apparently, uh, a machine gun crew were taken out, I believe I heard the announcer say. Uh, so whilst that was all going on, something good was happening on, on the map for Orange Pest. And he will snag the Panzer IV on the wrong side of the map for the Panzer IV with a, with a vehicle snare. Okay, that's nice. But, and we, we actually do have a pack gun to chase this down with. Okay, all right. Okay, Orange Pest, let's see if we can get this done. The pack gun gets set up in a beautiful position. This, this really ought to be a kill. No Panzer Tactician, no Hail Mary available on this Panzer IV. Bonk, and pack guns are very good. So, okay. That is m a much needed kill on a Panzer IV there for Orange Pest. Couldn't have come at a better time. The game was looking a bit scary. And now going to call in a Greyhound to try and uh, assist here. Oh, God, but these this is what I mean, man. Look at the Fausts on these, on these Ostropen. You have to respect them so hard. That Greyhound, obviously, not looking so smart. And, oh god, now there's a giant Axis blockade of the uh, Allied Cutoff, which is gross. Um, what is this? We've got a 50 cal that's pushing in north, but that's probably the only thing that's going well for Orange Pest right now. And another Panzer IV is already on the queue. I don't know about buying that Greyhound, man. You had Major Tech. I think definitely save for something more impactful, be it a Jackson or uh, or a um, or another Sherman. But I, I'm just not sure that a Greyhound has the chops. Hang on, though. Cancels the Panzer IV and puts an Ostwind on the queue. Interesting. I mean, that is interesting because you know that your opponent has invested, what is it, like 80 fuel in another Greyhound? 60, okay. Um, and so... Their next medium tank, if, if they want one, is going to be quite a lot delayed. So you can go for the Ostr uh, Ostwind, which is a little bit cheaper than a Panzer IV. And a little bit more sort of squad wipey, if you like, against infantry. I mean, that's actually quite difficult to say because the Panzer IV at the moment is just seemingly so goddamn squad wipey. Especially with that Pindle Mount Energy 42 upgrade, which the Ostrapin does not get. Uh, sorry, the Ostwind does not get. So, okay, but it will be an Ostwind, and, you know, if only because we don't tend to see them so often, I'm glad to see an Ostwind. Panzer IVs are great, but, I mean, they're not exactly sort of eye candy. They're not exactly thrilling. So, immediately going to get stuck into this American MG. Yikes, that'll be a pickup. Nicely done. Yep. So, perhaps going to repatriate this MG42. And Orange Pest is definitely still in this. 350 tickets over 250. Look at the top right, look at the top left. This, this is definitely a real and potent American army. But Orange Pest doesn't have all the tools that they would like. We've lost all of our fuel units, really. Um... Sorry, heard a weird noise. <laughs> We've lost all of our fuel units, essentially, and we don't really have the AT resources that we would like. This Oswin stands to do a lot of damage, and there's not really a lot that can sort of curtail that. We don't have many Zooks. Oh god, those riflemen are absolutely on the chopping block. Nagano sensing blood wants the uh, riflemen. We'll get them. And oh god, he's going to overrun onto the pack gun as well. Oh no. And the, the lieutenant with Zook is kind of suppressed at the moment. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Seemingly no rifleman in the hood to throw down a anti-vehicle rifle grenade. And the Oswin going on a bit of a destruction, a cruise of destruction there. But has to get out. Enough damage is on. The pack, the pack gun finds a hit. Some Zook rounds do connect. So the Ost Oswin will have to fall back for now. But it's beginning to look a bit scary now for Frozen Mouth, whose core infantry is being eradicated and that is always a way to lose the game yeah okay wow there we go frozen mouth actually orange pest going to concede there um just i mean another panzer four on the queue the american army in disarray increasing amounts of disarray and nagano taking a pretty convincing win there it, it is odd to see the allied player concede when they actually have a scoreline advantage and some army still to work with but i appreciate that the situation feels grim for the usf player here so um wow 
nicely done there. Nicely done. Ostrop and Doctrine doing Ostrop and Doctrine things. Turns out still strong, those Ukrainian boys. Um, look, I... I don't. I do not think Ostrobrin are overpowered. If they were to continue to exist in the way that they are existing right now in the game, I'm fine with that. But I, I think that the balance team. I think should talk about how they have access to Fausts. Maybe it should become veterancy dependent. That was a really good suggestion we had uh, on the. Oh wow, we get a rematch. Yeah, there's. Not, there's. I mean, there are some other good players, but I. I, I want to watch this rematch. That's what I want to watch. So, uh, Nagano sticking with Wehrmacht here, and Orange Pest going to be switching it up to Soviets. Fame and Villa approach a much more close and brutal affair. A much more personal map. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in today, by the way. I, um, I'm sorry I had to move the cast from 1700 GMT to midday, but uh, I suddenly realized yesterday that I already had plans for this evening. So, that's how come we're casting at midday today. To apologize for the mix-up uh, for the chains in schedule. Looks like we got ourselves just a 45 second little timer here. So uh, not to worry. Uh, let's I tell you what, whilst, that's, whilst this is going on, we can just have a quick look at the schedule for next week. So next week we will be casting. This is, this is the regular schedule as far as I'm sort of concerned for now. Uh, Mondays we will be doing midday casting. Uh, so that's 12, 1200 hours GMT. Wednesdays and Fridays we're doing evening live game casting, 1700 hours GMT. Um, we're going to be casting one game of Deserts of Karak per stream as well. Um, so that's going to be a really cool thing just to spice things up a little bit. And uh... <coughs> yeah, um, that's, that's going to be the schedule moving forward. Sorry if I sound a bit sort of like scatterbrained or slightly lower energy today. It's so incandescently hot in this country right now. I mean, I've got the window wide open and I've got a huge fan, but I'm still sweltering. And I have been now for like days, it feels like. So it's like, and it's so hot, it's like difficult to sleep. And like, I have I have spent a lot of time in tropical countries and stuff. I'm, I'm okay with that, but I'm just not quite used to it in this country. So it's like, it's a strange feeling. So yeah, my sleep has been seriously disrupted by the amount of heat. It's just ridiculous. And the trouble is, <laughs> here's the real problem. It's not necessarily just the heat. Um, I was I was sleeping last night, and of course I have to have the window fully open. It's so hot. And then somebody's damn like house alarm just kept going off. So like, cannot sleep with the window closed, but someone's alarm kept going off. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's not great. So anyway, let's go ahead and introduce our players. Looks like we've got Nagano here playing as the German infantry. Vermac forces now spawning in the north of Fame and Villa approach. So here we go. That is going to be Nagano and spawning in the south. Now as the Soviets uh, coming into the second game here. This is a rematch, of course. It's going to be Frozen Mouth, who apparently is Orange Pest. So there we have it. <coughs> so I'm glad actually. I'm glad that Nagano is going to switch it up to. Um, Infantry, German Infantry Doctrine. Uh, I wonder if this is an adaptation to the map or, you know, just a, a flight of fancy. I don't know how Nagano decides these things. Perhaps does favour the German Infantry Doctrine on this map. We'll see. And it's going to be uh, initially techless conscript-based opening here for Frozen Mouth. Ah, going with the defensive doctrine, defensive tactics uh, commander for the Soviet forces here. I really like this commander. Now that the community balance team has had a repass on it, let's have a quick look. So you get the Dushka. You, you get all of the um, weapon team options, basically. So you get the Dushka, you get the heavy mortar tube, you get the M42. Pardon me. Those are all really useful in their own ways. Uh, except for the 120 mil mortar squad, actually. I think for 340 manpower, it's actually not very good, to be honest. But uh, at least it is a mortar, and it, it can be effective. I just think it's overpriced or under-effective, depending on like, which way you want to look at it. I think it, I think it just needs to be better. Um, but uh, all of those units can be useful. You get the advanced fortifications, which is like, eh, it's like, it's all right. It's not, not neither here nor there. And then in the late game, you get the anti-tank overwatch, which is really good. I, this is one of the best munition dumps in the game, for my money, because... It, it can and will kill almost any German tank if you can just keep them in line of sight or lock them in, in the radius of the anti-tank overwatch. And that's a strong ability to have. So, there we go. The 120 mil is 10 pop cap as well. <sighs> really? I mean... Uh, I don't know, man. 
it's just in a weird place. I th think for me, the, is the issue for me is accuracy because it's so inconsistent. It seems to very seldom hit and that is unforgivable in a mortar. It, mortars need to be inaccurate. They can't be consistent. They cannot hit all the time, but it feels like the 120 mil never hits, which given the size of its blast radius is kind of crazy. And then because it costs more, it basically never vets up because it just isn't rolling enough damage to vet up its increased amount of damage. So yeah, Yondir Timo. Good to see you in chat there, friend. Um, I kind of agree with you. The thing is, the artillery squads, the indirect fire squads in the game need to do enough damage consistently enough to vet up, or, or else they are not worth it. That has been proven over the history of Company of Heroes 2. It's not about the vetting up, necessarily. The veterancy styles are nice to have, but they're not essential. But if the unit isn't vetting up, that means it's not doing any damage. And if it's not doing any damage, then it's not worth it. You know, you need it to be doing some damage. Smoke alone can be useful, I'll give you that. Smoke is a thing that doesn't really give you any veterancy and is incredibly useful, but the, you don't buy mortar squads just for the smoke. The smoke is very useful, but if it didn't come with a mortar, it would be kind of terrible. So, um, And I think some of the indirect fire squads in the game have got the curve correct, where they hit consistently enough, they vet up fast enough, they do damage that, you know, if you keep them alive for maybe 10 or 15 minutes firing, then they will pay for themselves, and I think that's a healthy place to be. Great example, the GR34 Vermac Mortar. It is a good price, it fires rapidly enough, it is accurate enough. Oh, sorry, I thought someone was knocking on my door. Uh, it, it's accurate enough that it do, go, goes on to get veterancy, and it's it, that is a mortar that's in a good place. Um, and even the Soviet PM81 is, is fine as well, actually. Uh, I think that's a fine mortar, it's just... It's just in a fine place. The American Mortar Squad, likewise, not the way I foresee it, because the pack howitzer is so good. Um, but yeah, the pack howitzer and the light gun, actually, I think are also in good places. Um, it's really just the 120 mil mortar tube that I don't like right now. Uh, the lefts and the ML20s, for me, are very hard to judge, because um, I don't see them. <laughs> I think in the last, like, two months of casting, I've seen one left 18 game. Um... So it's very hard for me to judge whether they're good or not. Um, perhaps because I never see them, that is a, a pointer towards they are not good. I don't know. Um, I think they have a lot of potential, but I think that they are so easy to deal with. I think that Company of Heroes 2 actually has kind of a design problem with, uh, with, the, with the static emplacements that you have to build, like the Pac-43, like the ML-20, and things like that. Um, because... Something about the way they work with just being able to... There are so many click-in munition abilities that you can just click on them and then they're dead. You know, like incendiary artillery is a really good one. Or if you can get any infantry nearby and lob a grenade or a bundle grenade or an incendiary grenade, they just die. And like, I get that they need to be fragile. I get that you need to be able to counter them, especially if you are able to get infantry up on top of them. But at the moment, they seem so prohibitively fragile that even the Pack 43 I haven't seen that look very good in a game for, like, ever. So... I just think the way they work is really awkward, having to build them with engineers and then having them locked into one place and then ha not be not be recruitable really, because the hardware like never survives it seems. I don't know. I just don't really like them, um, I guess is what I'm saying. I certainly don't think that they often pay for themselves. But there are there are certain situations on some maps where they can actually go on to be really good. So yeah, it's a weird place. Oh, wow, Orange Pest. Thanks very much for the host there, friend. Welcome aboard, everybody. you joining me here for a little bit of midday magpie casting. Uh, I believe we're actually casting you, Orange Pest, so um, please no spoilers in chat. Appreciate that. Uh, it is you! <laughs> oh, I thought so, wicked. Uh, so it looks like you have just called in Adushka, 50 cal. Going to be moving out here. And it's going to be a 250... Oh, sorry, that's a 251 half track here for uh, Nagano. As we move through the final stages of this early game. Nice to see Soviet Defensive Doctrine out on the ladder doing Soviet Defensive Doctrine stuff. What's up and welcome everybody. Thanks very much for tuning in this fine Friday. It is swelteringly hot here in the UK, so... <laughs> I'm casting in the shade to try and uh, stay out of the sun at the moment. 
Okay, GR34 is going to get mixed into the roster here for Nagano. Okay, cool. It's nice that uh, we're going to see a completely different style from Nagano compared to the previous game. Like, just completely different. So, that's pretty spicy. How hot is the UK? It's 32 degrees Celsius. <laughs> and it's like 26, 25 overnight. It's like... Ugh. It's too much. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, I, I'm hoping... Oh, no, no, Flame Projectors have been taken. Damn it. We've seen some really good games. We saw um, Helping Hands on the last stream using a 251 half-track just to reinforce units and stuff, and it looked really sweet. I think Vermac players... The 251 half-track as a reinforcing half-track looks pretty cool these days. Um, but I appreciate the Flame Projectors can look cool as well. We're going to start burninating the countryside here. Forces the Dushka back. Is that an M42? No, it's an actual Zis gun. Wow, there we go. So... The full fat Zisk gun going to be added into the roster here for Orange Pest, and that will help. Uh, but it's going to use a barrage here, which does mean that it will be static for a moment here. So Nagano scrambling to try and get the flame half track into position for the counter. Oh, flame half tracks are so brutal. They can be so brutal. Oh, no. Okay, the Zisk gun will turn. It's going to get roasted. Hopefully, he gets a shot. He does get one shot, and then the unit just burns. Gross, that rifle grenade. Actually overkill there. Man, Zisk guns. Weapon teams take so much damage from the flame half-track. That's so brutal. Oh, and the GR-34 is actually going to gib the recrew. He's up to double GR-34. This is punishing. Actually, this is really good. So I think Nagano has figured it out, right? He's figured out that this is defensive doctrine. The strength of defensive doctrine, of course, in these early stages is the weapon teams. And the G double GR-34 is a great way of countering that. And I was just saying earlier on in this in this cast, I think the GR-34 is the perfect example of a mortar squad that is in a good place in the meta. Nice. Wow. Those mines proving crucial there. Finally striking back and finding some value against this seemingly relentless Axis killing machine. So that's nice. Picking off the half-track is really good. But we're still basically conscripts and two weapon teams against a pretty nasty Axis infantry roster here with a machine gun and crucially these double mor these double mortars veteran squad upgrades are starting to come down double muni is flowing for nagano so that's the crucial thing for german infantry doctrine of course and we're going to start seeing those veteran squad leaders come down and then well then we'll see let's have a look at the tech quickly battle phase two is just coming on here and actually no sign of it's going to be a t70 all right fair enough Okay. Well, this is a, this is definitely a battlefield on which a T70 can go on to do quite well. There's a number of weapon teams that can hunt. Has to fade the pack gun and being fausted, of course, but that's totally doable. So it's gonna gonna be on orange pest here to keep the T70 alive. Hey, what's up, El Elpen? Good to see you in chat, friend. I hope you're well. Two time the yeah, the double GR34 is punishing the weapons hard. And that seems like a really strong thing to bring in. Nagano clearly identifying that they're playing up against this defensive doctrine. So yeah, the WGR-34 making this Dushka pretty hard to use, making the Sis gun pretty hard to use. And there's going to be an abundance of smoke here for Nagano as well, which could be helpful depending on how these engagements look coming up. Oh my god. See, this is what I mean. The GR-34 is just so consistent. It fires quickly and it's accurate enough that it's usually getting a bit of damage. And that's the right place to be. Compare and contrast to the 120 more mortar, which is like way more expensive and just does way less through all phases of the game. Pack gun here finds the T-70 in arc. The Grenadier's going to try and angle around to try and get a Faust here. And that would probably be a fatal Faust. The pack gun is still here. <gasps> no, the Faust is going to connect. Really? Oh no. Uh-oh. So now the T-70 crippled on death's door. The pack gun frantically scanning to try and find an angle here. Orange Pest is going to continuously micro the T-70 behind the line of sight blocker. But incendiary rounds on an MG-42 are going to be used here. Dackering in. And that is probably going to be a kill on the T-70. There's just nowhere for it to hide here. Even these Grenadiers could come through for a second Faust if they really need to. Uh, Storm Jaeger live. Uh, Frozen Mouth is Orange Pest. That is what we're being told by everybody, including Orange Pest. So, yeah. Frozen Mouth is Orange Pest. Got mixed fighting going on across all sections of the map right now. A brave squad of engineers desperately trying to poke through and find these mortar squads.
But it's hard going right now for the Soviet player, who's lost the Dushka. That in desperate need of a recrew. And that's enough. That is enough. Orange Pest going to GG out of that one. Wow, I mean, perhaps an early GG, but we're, we're trailing so hard. And I'm, I'm feeling like Orange Pest's composition have been substantially countered there. So yikes. That's pretty tough. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw us into another game here because uh, we've had two quick ones there. What's up? And uh, welcome aboard to all of you. Thank you very much for the host, Orange Pest. I very much appreciate it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Magpie842. I cast live games from the Company of Heroes 2 Ladder and occasionally other things as well, tournaments and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, this is my Twitch stream. It's a ridiculously hot day today, so my energy levels are lower than average, but we're, we're cracking on. We're having good fun here. We're casting some games. Uh, you can find me streaming on these days at these times. So Monday at midday, 1200 GMT is when I will be casting. Actually, yeah. Um, and uh, Wednesday and Friday uh, I cast in the evenings at 1700 hours GMT. And uh, you can also find the VODs at youtube.com slash magpie842. So uh, yeah, if you like what you see, drop a follow, drop a like, or head on over to the YouTube and uh, see what you make of it. Uh, now I'm just going to see if there's another game that we can jump into here. Mm hmm. Alright. Just checking the top of the live game ladder here. All right, so we've got a game with Angry Dutchman against Enster Backman. That doesn't ring a bell. Let me just check here. See if we can get any more information about these players. Mm. Seemingly not. Okay, there's a crossing in the wood game here between a chill and My Little War Ponies. Now, I don't know My Little War Ponies, but I am inclined to jump in and cast that one. Um, let me just see. I mean, alternatively, there's a Lost Glider game between I Am Nice Person and Quicksilver. Let me let me bring you guys on into the lobby here. So, all right, th this is the choice. We've got Crossing in the Woods or Lost Glider. These are the two games I reckon that we should be looking in. So um, help me out here, guys. What do you want to see? Type 1 in chat if you want to see the Crossing in the Woods games between Achil and My Little War Ponies. That's Vermak versus Soviets. Type 2 in chat if you want to see I Am Nice Person versus Quicksilver. Help me out here. I can't decide which of these games we want to cast as I quickly pour myself a cup of tea. Crossing is good. Okay. thing about Crossing is we'd have to wait like five minutes for it to start, but I'm, I'm more up for a Crossing in the Wood game. Uh, Glider is a shit map. <laughs> Lots of ones popping up in chat. All right, Stormy Egget. Thanks, buddy. Comrade Strelok. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for chipping in. It's democracy in action. All right. Quicksilver is strumming bird. Oh, okay. Thanks, A-Game. How do you know these things? Cast, please. I watch VOD later. Okay, so A-Game wants to see the Lost Glider game. That is one vote for the Lost Glider game. Okay, guys. I'll give you, I'll give you 30 more seconds here. Type one in chat if you want to see the Crossing in the Woods game. Vermac vs. Soviets with a chill vs. My Little Ponies. Press 2 in chat if you want I Am Nice Person vs. Quicksilver. Actually, both Vermac vs. Soviet on Lost Glider. Looks like a lot of support for game 1 here. So we're, I think we're going to jump in and cast that one. Sorry, A-game. You've been outvoted here. And to be honest, I feel like casting a Crossing in the Wood game as well. So we're going to load on into this one. Now, there is a bit of a delay on the start of this one. This game literally is fresh off the top of the uh, Company of Heroes 2 ladder. So um, I might just take a five minute break while this game loads in because, you know, we gotta, we gotta wait the five minutes out. I can stretch my legs, go and grab an ice pack and like press it to my, press it to my forehead because it's like just so goddamn hot here. Okay, so we've got four minutes till the start of this game. I will, uh, I'll see y'all in four minutes time. Keep it locked here to Magpie842 and we'll be back with hopefully a really cool game of Company of Heroes 2. Catch you guys in four minutes, so that'll be at 54 minutes past the hour. See you soon.
Greetings, what is up and a very warm welcome back to this a Midday Magpie, Friday the 26th of June. And uh, <coughs> hopefully we've got a good game lined up for you guys here. We've had a couple of interesting ones already today. So let's go ahead and jump straight on in. We're loaded in, the game has started. It is going to be Spawning in the South as the Vermac pieces a chill. And Spawning in the North playing as the Soviet forces who is presently, okay, there we go, it's gonna show up 25 seconds later, but better, better late than never, it's gonna be My Little War Ponies. So, um, a newcomer here in the north, never cast this particular player before, gonna be rolling with guard rifle combined arms tactics, a Soviet airborne, and of course, shock rifle frontline tactics, the prolific IS-2 KV-8 commander. For our German player here, it looks like we've got, well, elite troops doctrine, mobile defense doctrine, and who is this geezer? Blitzkrieg Doctrine. Okay, been a hot minute since I've seen this guy on our roster. So what do we get? Panzer Tactician, Tactical Movement, Reconnaissance Overflight, Command Tank, and Stuka Close Air Support. So, yeah, that's absolutely a fine package. Those are all useful abilities, to be honest. Panzer Tactician, always good. Reconnaissance Overflight, useful. Command Tank, useful. Stuka Close Air Support, potentially strong. And Tactical Movement can be useful. So, definitely a good commander. Perhaps not one that's super hot right now in the meta, but I'm up for seeing something a little bit different out here. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, those are the uh, those are the ingredients. It looks like some pretty straightforward bulletins here for our Axis player. Panzer Grenadier accuracy, perhaps the only slightly unusual one for the Soviet player. We've got increased penetration on ZIS guns. We've got two percent increased accuracy on Maxims and some uh, conscript DPS. So that sort of suggests a support weapon Campanile style is going to be favoured by my little war ponies here. And uh, we're going to find out what the tech will be as this game moves on. And I'm going to crack open... What do we have here today? It's a San Pellegrino Aranchiata Rossa Blood Orange drink. It's what we're going to be rolling with this morning. <sighs> oh my god, fresh from the fridge. Much needed a cold drink. As Grenadiers and Engineers going to exchange the first shots in anger here on crossing in the woods. MG42 present and correct, of course, for the Vermac forces, and that tends to define the texture of the early engagements, the positioning, facing, placement, and the ways in which the, so the Soviet squads are able to take any damage into that MG42 do tend to define these very early game battles. Vermac's ever dependent on their potent weapon teams. Looks like the MG42 for now is actually gonna leapfrog up into a structure uh, over here on the east of the map. So this is a pretty defensive place, to be honest. Not looking to get too much done with that. Most of the Soviet forces are over here in West, and they're gonna push up and perhaps uh, even go as far as the cutoff here. Not that that would be actually cutting anything off right now, but still a strong position to hold for the North spawning, spawning allied player. Fresh from Sainsbury's, haha. <laughs> nearly, mate, nearly, fresh from Okado. But yeah, no, makes no difference, really. And yeah, Soviet forces looking pretty strong right now, pushing hard across all areas of the map. Where's the MG42? Has he moved it yet? Yeah, it's gonna leave the building, but this is a touch, this is an awkward early early game, to be honest, for the Axis player, that their MG42 just hasn't been anywhere near a fight. So Conscript's actually now starting to trade pretty badly. Caught out in the open, that is three squads of Grenadiers, and yeah, the Conscripts will have to GTFO. Gotta respect the DPS. On those Grenadiers, you know you're not gonna be able to take that fight. So the conscripts turn tail and run, and I'm hoping, where are the engineers? Okay, I'm hoping that we have an engineer fall back and a tech building thrown down sooner rather than later. It makes me a bit nervous when Soviet players just persist on playing techless, like certainly beyond the six or seven minute mark, but even as early as this. Okay, there we go, there comes the fallback, and I'm hoping it's gonna be a support weapon Campania. And in, in a reversal, a chill is now the player pushing forward with his core infantry squads, looking to find damage on the other side of the map. S Minefield positioned in a wonderful position. All right, a chill. That's brutal, actually. That could catch a lot of falling falling back squads. There are so there are um, conscripts who are out here, actually. That's two S Minefields. Oof, a chill. This is brutal stuff. How on earth are you gonna How on earth are you gonna fall back from here? This looks really scary. These S minefields are in great places. My little war pony is going to go ahead and activate the Soviet airborne doctrine. So uh, SVD crates beginning to drop in. You can see some of these conscripts already picking them up from the base. Remember, of course, in the last patch, that was changed from uh, 45 to 60 munitions. So some rebalancing has gone in there. Okay, so these conscripts are turbo low, and we're just going to follow their retreat path. If they even make it to the S minefield, they're getting gunned down in negative cover here. Great chances of a squad wipe, and the S minefield will be the fatal part of this operation. 
Oh my god, the mine detector! Arrives at a crucial moment. My little war ponies. What an epic save. Rifle grenade is going to connect onto those engineers, though, so they can't stay long. SVT, SVD toting conscripts are here with more, uh, more, more of their brothers showing up for Mother Russia. And they're going to uh, get these grenadiers to have to GTFO and let the um, engineers get to work on these S minefields. Wow. Literally masterfully defusing the situation there. My little war ponies gets out from what is potentially a really nasty spot in a very clever way, just the metal detector arriving at the pivotal moment to prevent those conscripts from exploding. And uh, that's good because it means that this game continues to be even. If you start losing, if you start hemorrhaging core infantry squads at the sub five minute mark, you're gonna have a bad day. So, yep. <clears throat> and with that little poke blunted, the map is now gonna start turning red again. You can see on the mini map, my little war ponies uh, spreading Soviet influence across the map at the moment. And additional SVD crates are going to be getting dropped in. So, okay, now that we know that it is Soviet airborne, I'm no longer so concerned about the lack of tech, of course. Because we can call in the Dushka, we can call in SVDs, so there's a little bit more punch and ability and sophistication available to this Soviet player, independent of tech. Uh, but I would still... I, I still think it's a mistake to try and play on too long without support armor core because the Zis gun is so useful and it stops you from dying in so many situations. So I do hope that we do see a support uh, a support weapon camp and I at some point. It's going to be a 2-2-2 scout car here for our German player. And... Uh, Still no commander pick here for a chill. My little war pony is actually floating a reasonable amount of manpower, perhaps indicating a desire to move into guards, uh, the guards' airborne infantry when they become available shortly. Here, additional SVTs becoming called in. It's so going to be a two-five-one on the heels of this two-two-two. So, a chill going to have uh, a nice light mechanized mobile force available here. We'll see if that's going to be for flame projectors or for putting on mobile momentum based pressure with the reinforcing probably feels like it's going to be flame projectors seems to be a bit of a munition stockpile um piling up here for the vermac player and just flame projectors are just they're just pretty hot right now 222 finding a lot of value causing a lot of soviet squads to have to gtfo uh anti-vehicle grenades have just finished i believe yep um so now the 222 will have to respect the conscripts a little bit Strumming bird, I hope you didn't cast the one I just played. Ah. Uh. No, 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 I didn't. Uh, we, we were casting orange pest games before this, Strumming bird, so don't worry, you're safe. <laughs> well, welcome aboard, though. Good to see you in chat there, friend. Um. All right, so, yeah, continuing to apply pressure here as uh, my little ponies, pushing with conscripts wherever possible. The 222, going to be... The mobile response unit policing the advances of these uh, Soviet infantry squads. And you have to fall these guys back. This is too much, bro. Whoa, we have to get the fallback. Oh, God, he's going to have to fall back past a lot of KARs here. Dis distraction squad of conscripts will come in to try and buy some time. And they ought to be okay here. The 222 can overrun a little bit. No sign of mines here, actually, for the Soviet player. So the 222 relatively safe to do so. A chill doesn't know this, though. So this is quite a brave brave pursuit. Conscript squad with SVDs though getting very low on the chopping block and there's just kind of nothing here. The T-70 won't be out for a second or two. Uh oh. Oh god. This is looking really brutal. Oh no. He loses a conscript squad with SVDs. Oh that's a rough thing. That's a rough thing to happen. And the, T the T-70 is nowhere here and the pack gun is already out. Pardon me. The good old pack gun to not die that Vermac forces do require. And... This is starting to look a little bit grim for the Soviet player, if I'm honest. Look at the top left. Look at the top right. There's a lot more damage and a lot more mobility and a lot more sophistication in this Vermax army right now. And the flame projectors are done on that half track, so it's pretty scary. A Maxim actually is going to show up. Okay. I mean, I love a good, I love a good Maxim. I'm just sad it's not a Dushka. <laughs> And we've got fighting going on 
across a large section of the middle of the map now. T70 going to reveal itself. The 222 immediately tracking with the auto cannon. T70 doing its best to focus down the uh, 251 half track. Another squad of conscripts on the chopping block here, but they will escape for now. There are mines on the central bridge, so the Axis player has to be careful with the uh, with the movement on these vehicles. No metal detector for a chill just yet. And the 222 handily winning this engagement. Conscripts are going to come forward. AT vehicle grenade will connect. So the T70 going to get the KO blow on the 222 and then sneak away the pack gun round. <laughs> Oh, a near miss there on the pack gun round. The T70 escapes to fight another day. Pretty frustrating stuff there for a chill, but not the end of the day. You can lose a 222 just fine. He's going to pick up a conscript squad. Oh no! These conscripts just forgotten about my little war ponies. Mm, perhaps I mean this is not this is not looking like the best start in sendry rounds from this MG42, reaching all the way back to that maxim. Oh god! And the wheels have fallen off this particular bus. This is starting to look a little bit terrible now for my little war ponies. Feels bad. This was the first game I've ever cast from this player, and you know, they may or may not be amazing, but in this sample of one, it's not looking great for the Soviet player here, now is it? As Panzer Grenadiers are going to be the next thing added onto this Axis composition. Down to just four units. Oh my god, this is such a rough place to be. Did the um, half track just. Oh no, it was MG42 foot squad uh, managed to find the mines on that bridge there. Elpern, I don't disagree. This one is looking over. It's 53 supply over 21. The Soviet player in a grim place right now. Grenadier's going to secure a lot of ground, going for the cutoff. And, I mean, Guards Airborne are here, but it's not really... <laughs> He's going to buy the PPSH package? Really? Huh. I thought for sure you'd want the DP package there. Hmm. Interesting. What is the primary role of an MG42? <laughs> sweep for infantry? Oh, sorry, suppress infantry or sweep for mines? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely effective at either. All right. I mean, probably my little war ponies gets to have one more bite at this cherry, right? They're going to have enough time to try and put together something resembling an army because this is Company of Heroes 2 and you can't just force your opponents to leave the game. You can't just overrun into the base and kill them. Oh god. Oh god. Are these conscripts going to die? Uh, uh, Panzer Grenadiers with MP4 with them STGs are pretty good. The conscript escapes for now. T70 comes across. Oh god. The pack gun has it, in, has it acquired though. Skirting away from death once again. Guards airborne. PPSH is blazing. But you know what counters them? 250 half sorry 251 half tracks with flame projectors and yeah oh god this is looking rough doesn't doesn't get much worse but having said that you know fuel income the one thing my little war ponies has been doing well is controlling the fuel points and as long as you don't feed this axis player too much fuel you're not too far behind datton my friend what's going on yeah today was supposed to be an evening cast but i realized that i was i had double booked myself I already had plans for this Friday evening, um, so uh, yeah, I put out I put out a tweet and I put up an announcement on the YouTube channel and um, uh, oh, the rifle grenade, so sick! Nice shot, a chill, nice shot. Um, so yeah, we're casting at midday today. Just um, as a, it was, it was a change from the schedule that I had put up. And I apologise for that, but uh, seemingly a lot of people can catch us live even at midday today, so that's really good. Yeah, that rifle grenade was so on point. What a shot. Um, I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, the Soviet player has actually, even despite have taking this much of a beating, the Soviet player has kind of dominated the fuel income this game. Um, and you can rebuild, and it's only behind by, like, 100 tickets. So... I still feel like as soon as there's any real fight, the Soviet player ought to just fold, but... There, may be a, there might be a ray of hope here. We're up to three squads of conscripts. I believe they're all going to have SVDs here in a second. Is that right? Oh, no. Well, two with SVDs at least. And we lost the guards airborne to the rifle grenade. We've got a Dushka and a Maxim. We've got a T-70. I mean... That, that is actually a reasonable matchup for this army in the top left. The pack gun right now is... Actually, you know what? It's not a paperweight because we've got a T-70. But yeah, okay, fair enough. What is everyone talking about? 
45 for the strafe. One of the cheapest you get, even if you spam mines. Yeah, Panzer IV needed. Sure. Uh, support weapon, support armor core is just finishing up now. Panzer IV will not be that far away. Panzer IVs are in such a good place right now. They are just so effective, it seems. Artillery guy, 155. Nice to see you in chat, friend. Midday magpie, indeed. Oh, the paratrooper plane strafe ability. Cool, cool, cool. I always forget that they can do that. So, uh, a Wehrmacht Maxim tucked away in the corner here going to be doing a number on these uh, engineers as they try to get some work done over there. But, I mean, look at look at how good the fuel harassment and control has been from the Soviet players. Actually not quite going to get it this time. The Maxim will push away those engineers. But it is being flanked by some uh, conscripts, so perhaps it's going to be able to get that fuel point. Conscripts in mid going to be getting roasted and toasted here as the 250 half-track going to do a good job of kiting away. But... I feel like My Little War Ponies, for the cost of some scoreline tickets, has had the time now to get back in this game. This composition is not super awful. It is just merely bad. So there might be a way back in here. We'll see. We'll see. We've not been super impressed by My Little War Ponies sort of decision making and a couple of little micro errors here and there, but I'm still open to being impressed. They still have an opportunity to try and do well in this game. And, I mean, double machine gun, triple conscript, and a T-70 is a reasonable proposition for crossing in the woods at 16 and a half minute mark. Like, it's not the best, no, but it's reasonable. Ost? It's going to be an Ostwind? Hmm. Uh, I don't know about this. Mechanized armor Campanara is on the way. Mm, this Ostwind is not early enough to be good, I think. Uh, yeah, it'll dominate the T-70. In fact, it'll dominate all these Soviet units. But I feel like it just kind of gets beaten by a T-34. Ooh, going to pick up a Pioneer squad there. That's going to have to be rebought. 200 manpower that a chill would rather put elsewhere. That's also the only mine detector off the roster there. So, okay, my little war ponies. I see you finding value out on the map. Oh! Oh my god, he gets up on top of the pack gun. <laughs> this is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Oh no, pack gun flustered here. And is that the Dushka in a lovely position here? Going to be suppressing this MD-42. The T-70 plying its deadly trade. Paratroop guard's going to come out at a pivotal moment here. Desperately looking for the kill on the pack gun and he gets it. Now the T-70 can try and force this down. Are the guards going to go for the capture? I wouldn't. Oh, he does though. Didn't know about the Grenadiers. Definitely didn't know about the Ostwind. It was going to hoon into this T-70. Actually doesn't focus down the pack gun. I guess he can get that with the Grenadiers though. And now it's Ostwind versus T-70. And that never looks good for the light tank. Uh, the Dushka, the paratrooper guards, forced to flee, and now the T-70 will as well. The Oswin going to push here, and I can't see any mines, so I think he's going to get the T-70 here. Like, I don't see a way out for this T-70, right? The Oswin can just chase. Oh, wow. Hang on. No, yeah, yeah, okay. That'll be that. Oh, my God. How did he dodge those shots? That T-70 is just... This is like the fourth time that T-70 has escaped with pixels of health. And he's actually going to tag the Ostwind with an anti-vehicle grenade. Shame that there's no Zisk gun or anything to, to stalk down the Ostwind here. This Ostwind is a weird choice. A Panzer IV I think I would have preferred. The only thing better than a Panzer IV is a Brumbar. Uh, yeah, for the Vermac roster, sure. I think Storm Tigers are better. <laughs> um, T-34 should be the choice. This seems like a fine table. Actually, he doesn't have the manpower for the T-34 right now. Oh my god, this T-70. How is he still finding value with this T-70? It's like breaking my mind. Jeez. This T-70 has actually kind of held this game together for my little war ponies. Um, and it will be a T-34 now. Okay. Wow. I mean, who thought that this game would look this close at any point after how the opening stages went? I mean, definitely not out of trouble yet as the Soviet player, but it's looking a lot better than it did. So I'm kind of impressed. There was some poor Ostier micro, but he also got super unlucky with the with the scatter on the Ostwind shells. Did you see those get the scatter? He had like five shots on that T-17, just needed one hit and didn't get any. It seemed, anyway. Uh, I appreciate it was at long range, but still, you'd really expect an Ostwind to get the kill against the light tank there, and it just didn't. So, um, yeah. Unlucky as well, I think, Storm the Eager. And now Soviet units are pushing in mid and west. 
whilst the Axis forces will grab East. Stormtroopers being added into the roster now. Elite Troops Doctrine gets picked. And that means Panzer Tactician is up. And it also means that we have the prospect of a potential Tiger as this game goes on. T-34 now on the battlefield and will reveal itself out here in West. Probably going to shove these Grenadiers away. Ah, uh, you think he A-moved the Oswind? Interesting. I don't know. I mean, it's possible, but... Didn't look like it was stuttering to me, but I, I don't know. My eyes were more on the T-70, to be fair. So, okay, T-70 now on three stars of Vet. Going to come for a dive here down the east flank. Gets up on top of the MG-42, and that's annoying. Conscripts here going to try and shove in. The MG-42 getting rapidly destroyed by this T-70. Three star T-70s do good damage. And that's going to force back an MG-42, a Grenadier squad, and a Stormtrooper squad. So that is a lot of value for this T-70 to be negating right now. MG-42 going to push up here for the Soviet player. Pat gun. Oh, no. Oh, God. How does the T-70 keep finding these weapon teams? That's a shoe mine, though. We will get caught out by the shoe mine. So the, uh, the mines off of the uh, half track there. Gonna, it, and now that's a dead T-70. Right, there we go. Stug? Wow. It's going to be a Stug game. Did not see this coming. Okay, and somewhere he's lost a conscript squad as well, actually. That must have happened over here in the west. Yeah, okay. There's a load of dead conscripts here. Turns out Grenadiers with an LMG-42 will gun down conscripts in the open. Uh, so, yeah, the T-34 is going to do its best to pursue here, but what can you do? Oh, shoe mines! Well, the shoe mines. Hey, all right. The shoe mines looking good, actually. Did the shoe mines get the team kill on the on the Grenadier squad? That would be pretty nasty. But yeah, that's nice. And actually, the Stug is just coming out here. So I wonder if there's going to be a moment where the Stug can try and stalk down this wounded T-34. Guards airborne get reborn. They're going to pile out of this building here. These shoe mines are looking good this game, Strelok. Looking real good, aren't they? That's like two for two good shoe mine hits now. And yeah, the Stug is going to come out and try and stalk down the T-34. Whoa, we need to micro this. There we go. Bonk. And this is what Stugs are born for. Here comes the uh, IL-2 attack, though. Oh, and he gets the Stug! Wow. <sighs> Spicy. Now the pack gun is going to have a go. That should be a kill. That should be an easy kill for this pack gun. Why is it not firing? There we go. Okay, when the dust settles, this has to be a dead Soviet player now, right? Because there's no answer for the Oswind, really, and there's no answer for the Flame Half-Track, really. I get that the Oswind is broken and needs repairs right now, but, like, this this, this should be over. It's over. <sighs> wow. Okay, well, we've had a series of quick games today, haven't we? Is that What was that, the third game I've cast in, what, and one hour 22, including maybe five or six minutes worth of breaks? So this has been a quick a quick, ga a qu a quick day, a rapidly moving day of Company of Heroes 2 today. Uh, so let's head back to the live game lobby and see what we can find. That was a good strafe, yeah. But it wasn't enough. All right, come on, give me a good game now. Okay, that, that could be game. That could be a good one. Oh, hang on, though. We've actually got Panzer Grenadier and Griefen. All right, let's show you guys the games that we've got, and then you can make a choice for me. You can help me out. Help me choose what game to cast here. So, option one. Game one. Hoi Jimmy 890 versus Begbie. Fermac versus UKF on Crossroad. That's game one. Game two, we've got Tiramashit, who is Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, against some kanji which I cannot de decipher who this kanji is, to be honest. Uh, so I don't actually know who this player is. Uh, but that's on Kaladni Farm. And yeah, so those are the choices, okay? Uh, I know it's not kanji. That's Chinese. I know, I know, I know. But the, the thing is, I study Japanese. So to me, those are just kanji. Um, so, okay, all right, chat. Give me some help here. Type 1 in chat if you want to see the Crossroads game with Jimmy890 and Begme. Vermac versus uh, UKF. Type 2 in chat if you want to see Panzer Grenadier and Griefen versus this Chinese player. And uh, I'll give you all a few seconds there. Whichever game gets the most votes, we're going to hop in and cast. <sighs> That's it. Okay, we've got two votes for the first game here. Thanks very much, Yandere and OPS. Demonstrating your democratic right to choose what we cast here. 
I'm going to give everyone a couple more seconds. And then, uh, and then if nobody else votes, you guys have swung it with two votes. How about that? That's uh, some majority. All right. Oh, some, some games coming in here. Some votes coming in here. Suarava would like to see... Okay, now we've got a tied vote. All right. <laughs> a democratic right to politely ask you to listen to us. That is a de that is the democrat. Uh, Storm Tegi Ive. Uh, the second game on Kolodny is um, Tiramashit, who is Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, versus a Chinese player. So, all right. So it's three votes for the Crossroads game, two votes for the Kolodny Farm game right now. It's close right now. Click on the Chinese player card. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's just a. Uh, it's this. This is what we see. Um, you may know him. All right, Storm Storm Jaeger, tell us. Can you can you divine anything about this player? Oh, okay. Well, it's even now at three votes apiece. Three votes apiece. Come on, give me give me something here. I think the next vote takes it. To be honest. I, I, could, I could happily cast either of these games. They both look good to me. Jono, you've already voted. Come on now. <laughs> All right. Sang to class votes for game one. That means that we are on four votes for game one now. So, uh... Oh, cry, cry on three. Coming in, tying the vote one once again. Yeah, I know. Who wants to wait seven minutes, though? I know, I know, I know. I'll tell you what. All right, it's even. We're going to roll the dice for it. We're going to roll the dice for it. Odds we cast game one, evens we cast game two. And that's an even, so we're getting the Panzer Grenadier and Griefen game. So there we have it. Fairly decided. Thank you very much for your votes, everybody, though. That was close. Ha! <laughs> Rigged! <laughs> Pardon me. Magic dice. You know, all about it, man. I'm much better at dice when I play with rigged dice. It's funny you should say that, OPS Jono, because I actually rolled a dice to decide how to vote in that. In before rage from someone. Okay. Looks like this game's actually underway. No timer to wait for at all. Spawning in the West, here on Colodney Farm, playing as the uh, Overcommand West Forces, the lesser spotted breed of Axis these days. Um, and actually, he's been playing as this faction a lot recently, so I'm hoping that there's going to be something nice here. It is going to be Panzer Grenadier and Griefen. Wahaha, <laughs> yeah, voice effects. And spawning in the East, playing as the American Forces, it's going to be Chinese guy. And there we have it. So, okay, uh, hopefully this is going to be a good one. It is the top-rated live game on the ladder, and PGA is certainly a great player. I'm pretty sure I've cast this particular combination of uh, characters before as well. And it's actually going to be a, um, a mechanized company build here, so expect some WC51 shenanigans as we get this game underway. Uh, it's also going to be a Kubel first opening from PGA, so that is already a little bit unusual. But I like getting it out first. I like it on this map as well. It's quite a big map. Remember the Kubels do capture points nice and quickly, and they're pretty cheap as well, actually, aren't they? How much, how much are Kubel wagons these days? 210, yeah. Uh, and a pretty useful unit, um, so nice to see a Kubel wagon used here. It's got the flag and the passenger seat there. Overpowered West faction. Uh, I think we're a way away from that, Jono, but we'll see. It's nice to cast some OKW though. We, we don't we don't really get a chance to cast a lot of OKW these days. They're definitely becoming an endangered breed. Enemy fire! All right. So looks like the bulletins are pretty straightforward for these two players. We've got a little bit of uh, M1 AT gun armor penetration for the American player. Uh, which is the only un abnormality on these uh, on these bulletins. Looks like Panzer Grenadier and Griefen is running with Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine, Elite Armor Doctrine, and Feuersturm Doctrine, three of my favorite OKW commanders. So that's an awesome selection there. And I like waiting to pick rather than just picking straight away so that you can, you can make a bit more of an informed decision. You can assess how the opening fight's gone, 
how has been my resource income um, and uh, you know what is my opponent's plan can I divine what strategy they're on and and pick something appropriate that's strong against that I am usually skeptical about just picking your commander straight away unless there's a benefit to be gained of course like for example the Ostrobin doctrines where you really want those Ostrobin coming in as quickly as possible so you want them coming in super fast but if your commander doesn't give you something immediately it's fine just to wait until you are literally needing something from that commander to click on it um, and I think a lot of players kind of forget that, certainly in ladder play, anyway. OKW forces here are going to be grabbing the US cutoff. This is annoying. Riflemen will be have to have to be rerouted to re recontrol this area. Yes, we're going up to four rifles, Storm Jaeger. Apparently so. And yes, I mean. It's kind of weird to me that he hasn't gone for the truck already, to be honest. Datton. We're kind of used to seeing it out by now. And it is one of the strongest things that you can be doing with this commander. It is one of the strongest things you can be doing with USF. That WC-51 truck is, like, in the conversation for most busted unit, I think. So good. Why not get cav rifles instead? Let me turn the question around. Why get cav rifles? I, I I don't really like cav rifles, except for under certain circumstances on some maps. Can you upgrade them with Tommy guns? Anyway, yeah, maybe one squad of cav rifles was, is appropriate, but generally, I mean, I don't mind quad rifles. I know it's a bit out there, but... Yeah, wow, actually, this is super out there, because now your tech is delayed. This is so weird. What are we doing out here, Chinese player? This is a good map for cab rifles, is it? Okay, fair enough. Oh, I suppose, yeah, with the WC-51. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, you guys are selling me on it. It's weird, then. It is weird, then, that we've got mechanized company and we've got a late WC-51 against an early Kubel when the WC-51 is so strong against the Kubel. And we've also not got cab riflemen, which apparently this is a good map for, and I do see that the synergy between cab riflemen and the WC-51 is pretty good. So, yeah. Four rifles is always weird. Yeah, okay. Well, I can't think of a reason for these four rifleman squads, but uh, I wish I wish we could talk to the players and ask them what's going on. You could satchel the church too. Okay, yeah, good suggestion, Dat. Yeah, very interesting. Constant exchanging going on here. Only one of these, only one window on this church can actually see these American forces. By the way, so there's like one KAR firing on behalf of these two squads in the building there. Uh, incendiary grenade will force these riflemen to GTFO, but that was a pretty awkward fight there for everyone involved. Um, so the WC-51 is out now. Riflemen are loaded up on that. Oh, the satchel is only anti-vehicle. Thank you, Strelok. My my knowledge of the US faction is weak. It is weak because it's the faction I have played the least by far. Like, by, by far. Oh, the WC-51 looking for the wipe on that on that Volks Grenadier. He will escape. That would have been quite the wipe to pick up. And now Axis forces angling forwards to try and get up on top of this cutoff. 50 cal. Oh, it's actually the 30 cal, isn't it? Brand no, it is a 50 cal. Jeez. Blazing away off of this WC-51. Yeah, you can Faust buildings, but we don't see it very often because buildings have quite a lot of health and it's it's an expensive Faust. In fact, to be honest, I'd forgotten that you can do that. Elpern with the like crazy arcane knowledge there. The weird ways, the witching ways of Fausting buildings. Well, when the dust settles, uh, it's going to be a pretty even game so far. Approximately even in the scoreline. Approximately even resource split. The cutoff has been amazing for the Axis player, though, actually. And that will be... Actually, no, that, that totally tilts the resource battle. Uh, it's going to be Mechanized Regiment HQ here. So that's going to be the tech here. Please tell me, is there no American officer on the way? Okay, Lieutenant just finishes. All right, okay, cool. Right, Lieutenant finishes up, so it's going to be Lieutenant versus Mechanized Reg HQ. That's going to be our opening tech picks here. So it's probably going to be... It is a Panzer II. Uh, 
And uh, this is a table well set for a Panzer II. The Panzer II, of course, a great counter to the WC-51 and will also help police all this American infantry. And if it's well looked after, it can go on to become quite the lawnmower. Uh, it's strange to me that uh, PGA is floating so much manpower. Surely you'd rather have a fourth squad of Volks active on the map or something. Where is the rest of this guy's squad? Where, where is the rest of this guy's squad? He's become so separated. Oh, he's over here? Wow, that squad was like really spread out. Yeah, it's not unusual to stack manpower, but I mean, I don't know. It just, I mean, he's stacking quite a lot now. Perhaps he's um, angling for a potential Fauschermjäger pick. That is a thing that you can do. It's these two players kind of just about making their way out of the early game now. And uh, we're going to see what the pick is going to be from Lieutenant Tech. Let me just... Which one's the Lieutenant building? I don't know USF Tech at all. Okay, no sign of the mechanized platoon command post yet. So I wonder if that announces uh, that, that Kanji here is not interested in going for a Stuart. Probably. Panzer II coming in pretty deep here. Going to start lawnmowering some Yanks in the base. And there's really no answer for this Panzer II. It does look quite good against Lieutenant Tech, especially when you're not going up against Airborne or something like that. Just the lack of AT gun. Very telling for the USF here. And it's going to be a Kettenwerfer added into the roster next. Uh, I suppose you do have to be careful because if, if there was a Stuart coming, you would need something to deal with it. But we know that there probably isn't a Stuart coming. So Kanji here taking a pretty interesting approach to teching in this game. As the Panzer II going to find the Lieutenant right as the Zook finishes. It's going to take a couple of Zook hits there, which is a touch awkward. But not the end of the world. And it will be Fauschermjäger. Okay, cool. So Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine gets picked and Fauschermjäger get deployed onto the fallback path of this lieutenant. Two FG-42s won't have the DPS to bring down the officer. But, uh, yep, Fauschermjäger are out and it will be Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine. <coughs> and it is going to be a Stuart. Okay, so he must have just done the uh, mechanized company platoon or mechanized platoon command post just after i uh, moved away so okay wow he's going for a puma oh wow that's going to match up really well against the stuart wc51 player wow cool oh it's been a while since i've seen a wind up toys build so yeah it's gonna be panzer 2 puma i love it i really like it mechanized regiment can do some really cool stuff and one of the cool things it can do of course is panzer 2 puma and like there's just natural synergy between those two units right the puma really good against armored targets the panzer 2 really good against everything else so if you look after them both you can do a lot of work with this combination of units and because they're so small little diddy little motor units i just call them the wind up toys and uh panzer 2 here gonna be hooning in for damage in mid and the puma gonna be joining it here and i mean this stewart is gonna have to be pretty scarce i feel like this is gonna be quite a difficult battlefield for a stewart to go on to do well What's up, Aki HQ? Good to see you, friend. How's everyone's day? Swelteringly hot. <laughs> Swelteringly hot. If he's going Puma, he could have skipped the Raketan. Uh, I, I kind of agree with you, but Kolodny is a big enough map that... I, I do kind of agree with you, yeah. He could have skipped the Raketan. I would have liked to see the 4th Volts Grenadier squad, if I'm honest. Um, but for, for, for better or worse, we do have the Raketenwerfer and it is in a solid position there in mid. Puma just going to be dackering down these uh, these riflemen. And in south, we've got Volks Grenadiers, STGs finishing up on them. And uh, the WC-51 and the Stuart with these riflemen should be able to push these units out. But now, the Puma knows where the Stuart is, so he comes in, gets a lovely opening hit on that Stuart. That's a good chunk of veterancy gained for the Puma, which is a unit that can become very powerful with veterancy. Definitely one of the units that really transforms and blossoms with veterancy. <clears throat> 
Um, Aki HQ, so what did you miss? Well, you've missed a load of quick games, to be honest. They, they've, they've been quite one-sided today. We saw a couple of games of uh, Orange Past um, against Nagano, and um, then we took a punt on some players I've not seen before. And now we're casting uh, Panzer Grenadier and Griefen versus uh, Kanji, so... Um, yeah, I don't think you've missed anything, like, super out there or extreme, so you've probably joined us at a, just a great time, to be honest. Oh, he's going to get the... Oh, yeah. Panzer II on the retreat path. And Panzer Grenadier and Griefen starting to flex a little bit here against this American player. The wind-up toys doing what they were supposed to do. Kubuwagen going to be kiting in mid as the Storm Pioneers come forwards to deflect the, this Rifleman squad. And things are starting to look a little bit dicey for this American player. The Stewart is not going to be much use as long as that Puma is on the prowl. And this is a really tough position to be in. He's just going to have to find use where he can with the Stuart, just chipping in against infantry squads. Uh, we, we do have Zooks up on the um, rear ash, so that's that's nice. That is something. 50 cal going to be the next unit added in here for, uh, for Kanji here. Yeah, nice micro by PGA indeed, but this is kind of what I would expect by now from PGA. Such a, such a slick operator when it comes to the Axis factions, at least. I mean, pretty good with Allied as well, but still one of the players that I do think of as an Axis specialist. And, of course, the problem with going for the two wind-up toys is it does delay your Schwerpanzer HQ. Um, but the truck is out now, and he's going to park it over here to, to watch over the fuel in the cutoff. So, that is a relatively late Schwerpanzer HQ, but... But PGA has been so dominant on the map, I feel like we're actually doing okay. We're still keeping pace with the American player in terms of tech. Let me just check for major tech. No major on the way. And we've got a big fight being taken here with a tree right annoyingly in the middle of the camera. There we go. Let's see if we can move that one a little bit. Faust and Yugas are going to push up and try and get into a building. Remember, they don't have Fausts anymore. The Stuart is here. The Puma angling to try and find a shot through here. Oh, he's just not going to find it. The 50 cal in a decent position as well. This Panzer II just continues to mow down Americans, though. And with the Puma covering it, the Stuart just can't chase it away. And this is the synergy between these wind-up toys. Look how much pressure they let you put on. Look how mobile they let you be. And look how well they can deal with American infantry if everything goes correctly. So the Fauschermjägers are going to come back into this building. There's a lot of wrath being directed their way. PGA, are we paying attention? We have to get these Fauschermjäger. Oh, he's going to lose the Fauschermjäger there. Okay, that was a bit of a mistake. Putting the Fauschermjäger back, back into this building suddenly lets all these American units, which have been keeping, been frustrated by the Panzer II, they suddenly all get to unload into a high-value target. And that's a bit of a mistake, of course. Going to lose the Fauschermjäger there, and that's, that's an expensive loss. Without the Fauschermjäger on the roster, this does appear a little bit more doable for Kanji. Uh, Obersoldaten will be the next selection, coming, of course, out of the Schwer Panzer HQ. Uh, did he do Panzer authorization? Not yet. So, um, man, how good are Obersold Art now for 340 manpower, by the way? Like, geez, what a squad. And finally, perhaps, if we crack the tack, it seems like the American player might finally be able to take some points out on the map, but PGA has been doing such a good job of keeping this American player bottled up. Uh, the wind-up toys just camping the doorstep of the American base and keeping the pressure on. So, Rifleman and the WC-51 up in north. Obersoldaten will be tasked with ta handling them. Uh, well, meanwhile, we've got the Lieutenant and Rifleman now engaging in the south, whilst the Captain... Wow, we've actually had a side tech into Captain. Okay. Actually, I think that kind of makes sense, because we do kind of want... M we, we do kind of need AT guns out here. The fuel income hasn't been there to go for vehicles in a really big way. So... I think that the captain is actually quite smart. Recognizing that you're the underdog and you need to adapt to not die. That makes sense. The uh, pan the wind-up toy is going to come up here into the north of the map. Chase away the WC-51. Chase away those riflemen. Kubelwagen and Volksgrenadier is looking good in south. And just the noose tightening here. This American player has not taken game-ending damage. But it's becoming problematic. The scoreline is opening up in a massive way. 407 for PGA over the 277 of Kanji. And that is increasing rapidly. And that's the real problem for the American player. That's why we need to break out. We still have a fine army. We still have many great pieces in this list. 
but Kanji cannot afford to be conservative too much longer. We're going to have to try and see an attempt at, at controlling the midline of the map. At least one of the victory points, but we're getting to the point now where we might need to. We might need more than that. As the Puma here finds the Stuart again. Captain here going to push forwards. STGs and a Kubawa going to greet him. And it's just too much DPS. So he's got to give got to give way there. And with the Kettenwerfer and the Puma, uh, sorry, and the Panzer II in mid, I mean, what, 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 how do you, how do you break into the, into the west half of the map here as the USF player? PGA here doing a really good job of playing a, an aggressively defensive style, coming forwards and claiming the ground, and now making the game the American player's problem. All right, so the M1AT gun is finally out, gets a hit on the Panzer II. It's actually not set to prioritize vehicles. That's a touch awkward. Is that the legendary 20 min Kuba wagon? Not yet it's not, mate. You're 90 seconds too early. But we'll see. It might go on to be. Alright, so Panzer authorization is done. 65 fuel in the bank, so with the present income we're about two minutes away from going for a Panzer IV. And you have to think the Panzer IV will be a fine choice here. It keeps on the pressure, it deals with all these targets. It's a nice option. <clears throat> you know what else would be okay, actually, is a Stuka Zafus. Because uh, a lot of these American units do suffer, but then, then you're open to being countered by a Sherman. And, of course, the Panzer IV is much less susceptible to that kind of a counter. <clears throat> he's going Tiger. You think so? How can you tell he's going Tiger, Strelok? Hell yeah, Russia KT. No! We've, I've seen PGA lose games on the channel, or lose, lose at least one game on the channel recently by going for a KT when he should have gone for a killing move. Had the advantage, waited for KT, and it cost him the game. So I, I, I'm I, an advocate for a Panzer IV into fist to the face. That's the plan. He does like Tigers, yeah. And they are great units, and Kolodny is, is quite a good map even for the King Tiger. It's not, not the best, but it's quite good. All right, but hang on. The American player making a concerted attempt here. The M1 AT gun is not quite far enough forwards. Okay, now it finds the Puma. 50 cal gets set up in a nice position. Storm pioneers are being annoying in this church. And I just, there's not quite enough momentum here for the American player. He just actually cannot get this done. You know what I'd like to see, actually, for PGA is an MG34. I think it's time to buy the MG34. Maybe even two. Because it just looks like it would be good here. He's going to go for a light gun, and there's nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, you guys are right. Sorry, I've just noticed the battle grip attack. Yeah, he is going for a tiger. Oh my god. PGA, mate, really? I don't know, man. I'm just sure that a Panzer IV would have been a bit better here, that's all. The MG34 should have bought like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, you're right. MG34s are amazing. Uh, just machine guns are amazing in this game. And when you're containing your opponent and doing so well, an MG34 just really helps close the door on any way that they could get back onto the map. Oh god, well, he might be able to pick up a 50 cal here, and that would be fine. Gonna kill the crew on that, the Panzer II, just reaping American souls. Cheers, Alpern, glad, glad you agree with me. Uh, and the M1 AT gun gonna get picked off with the Puma there. Yeah, you've gotta live your best life. If you wanna win with KTs, that's absolutely fine. If you're practicing KT builds on the ladder, sure, go for it. But, like I say, we saw him lose a game the other day because because he wait, because he just sat around going for KT and then the KT just isn't actually even very good at winning games necessarily because it's so slow. And we saw him just get taxed by T-34s. It was a game where the Soviet player lost 9 out of 10 T-34s. Literally, those were the numbers. But still won. Um, yeah, it was just a crazy game. But... Uh, this, this game looks very different. The American player has taken tons more damage to their core infantry. It's looking so rough. We can't be losing Rifleman. No! I mean, th to be honest, losing that Rifleman squad may very well be game ending. We just The core infantry roster is now depleted to the point where, you know, if you couldn't break out onto the map before, how on earth are you going to do it with, with fewer infantry squads? That's just so rough. Battle promotion! And now these Volks Grenadiers for the Fatherland comes down. They are angry! What is this now? 70 munitions. Sorry, it's Valiant Assault. Sorry, not for the Fatherland. My bad. 
Uh, moves quickly and attack more effectively. So yeah, these uh, these Volk Grenadiers, angry as hell, man. They are stimming and they are running in. Stim and run in. And they're going to get this cut off. And I think this game may be over before the KT even gets to come on the queue. So we're building more 50 cals? I don't know about that. And the cutoff is firmly grabbed. This is an American player who's on their knees right now. This is a really rough spot to be in. The wind-up toys have been so dominant. 22 kills, 3.5 stars of veterancy on this Panzer II. The Puma also looking fine out here. Oh! Oh, the Puma just shot the Major in the face. Was that the Major? Yeah, I think he actually hit the Major model. That's hilarious. <laughs> what a way to go. And look, look at all these American units just standing around. There's, 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 no, there's nothing for them to do. How do you get out on the map? You don't. WC-51 going to come out here and try and do something. I don't know, but I mean, a Panzer II is a Panzer II. That is an angry Panzer II at that. What is this ability? Oh, he's got marked vehicle comes down off of the WC-51, but it won't be enough. The Panzer II now four star. Uh, extends the range of the main gun. And that's game. Woof. Woof. PGA looking good out here. Damn, son. Wow. Okay. And I'll be honest, that American player didn't exactly play badly. It was a bit of a weird composition, though. Four rifles, and then a late WC-51 against early Kubel. Like, you're not doing yourself any favors there. Uh, yeah, I mean, pineapple fruit, you make a good point. Um, you cannot take that fuel with you into the next game. That's the other risk of going for the King Tiger all the time. Like, you just often will win or lose the game with loads of fuel in your bank, and that's a bad feeling every time. So let's have a look here. We've got Nagano and Rajan. Nagano playing USF. That's probably going to be a banger. We've got Jimmy890 versus Begbie. Still, that one's going on. That's a long game. Um, and that's kind of it. So I'm gonna jump into this one as the last company of heroes 2 game of the day a uh, bit of a delay on that one so i'm gonna take a quick break to make myself another cup of tea and just have a quick rest of my voice uh so we'll load on in i'll see how long the actual game delay is oh i'm sorry Jono. i'm sorry Brady. we're not gonna see ukf today they're so rare to be honest aren't they they're so rare but I cannot, I cannot say no to seeing Nagano play again. He's so on fire at the moment. He just looks so hot in like every game. He's just his decision making, his micro, it's just all on point. So here we go. Uh, it's uh, okay. Six minutes, six minutes. Okay, so I'll see you all at fifty-three minutes past. Okay. That's when this game will be beginning. So, um, yep, thanks very much for tuning in. I'm going to take a quick break whilst this game loads up. Catch you all at fifty-three minutes past.
Greetings! Oh, what is up and a very warm welcome back. The sun is still relentlessly, mercilessly, wrathfully shining, and the magpie is still casting. I come to you guys right now with a live one versus one battle featuring a sp -p -p pawning in the east, playing as the United States forces, coming off the back of a pretty hot win. I think it's Ruka ACL's Nagano. And spawning in the west, playing as the Overcommand West pieces, it is going to be Rajan, who's going to go ahead and pick the, what is this, Strategic Reserves Doctrine? No, sorry, Grand Defensive Doctrine. Of course that's the one that um, OKW get. Um, so, okay, cool. Well, the table is set here for hopefully an interesting game. This one of the more interesting maps in the pool for me as well. I like the sort of weird symmetry. Um, I like that the river cuts close to the base on one side, which can make getting out of your base a real nightmare. It's just an interesting, it's just an interesting map that you have a home bank of the river and, a, and an away bank of the river. And I don't know, I like the design. Mm. It's just, it's interestingly symmetrical and it provides opportunities for both players. And sometimes you get maps like this and they're just a bit too brutal. Like it's just a bit too easy to get stuck in your base with machine guns or whatever. Um, but I don't feel like that happens too often in this. Like, um, although I will say, if you can control this area as the eastern spawning player, it's very strong. Having a, having a machine gun covering this area is really strong. And likewise, if you're the um, western spawning player, like controlling this area and getting a machine gun like anywhere around here can just be very strong on this map. That is the only thing I've seen where I'm just like, hmm, this is really, really, really good. But, you know, using tanks on this map is hard and satisfying. That's what she said. No, but seriously, using um, using tanks on this map is, it is, as you said, a challenge, but also very satisfying because they're fast, they're mobile, they can cross this river nicely, but there are so many places they can get ambushed by AT guns or caught out by lurking infantry with uh, vehicle snares. Um, so, yeah. Going to be a Panzer Fusilier build here for Rajan, of course. One of the cool things about the Grand Offensive Doctrine is that you do... Ah, come on, mouse. Jesus. I swear this game's getting worse for the mouse, like, weirdness that happens with it. It's so bizarre. Just sometimes it just like, there we go. Look, you see that? It just like flails the flails the screen away when you press middle mouse. It's just like so strange. Anyway, Panzer Fusiliers, yeah, they're going to be here. Um, can somebody tell me, does anyone have the game knowledge? Like, in their vanilla state with no upgrades, are Panzer Fusiliers and Volksgrenadiers the same in terms of DPS when they're just firing their rifles? I don't know if they are or not. I'd like to know if there's any difference. Uh, Volks are much better. Panzer Fusiliers are worse. Fusiliers are worse by a bit. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Awesome. Very interesting. Okay. And the Panzer Fusiliers do cost a little bit more as well, don't they? Yeah, 10 manpower more. So it's all in all about that G43 upgrade then for the, uh, for the Panzer Fusiliers. But uh, he's mixing in a squad of Volks. So they are going to be spearheading this advance, leading the DPS, I suppose triple rifleman here for Nagano and then we're going to see which officer is being favoured today. Uh, the options for Nagano, mechanised company, uh, heavy cab company and recon company. So uh, we'll see a choice coming up. Is that a grenade range? Lieutenants and riflemen can throw grenades 7% faster. Wow, so we don't often actually see that one. And look, we've got some overcommand increased accuracy and DPS. Just just overcommand DPS. Over, overcommand um, Obersoldaten, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. DPS bulletins there, so okay, some pretty left field stuff. Wow, this is a pretty good surround. These riflemen are getting cut down. The fall down comes, the fallback comes down. One of these rifle squads could actually be weak. <gasps> wow, he gets a squad of riflemen at like the four minute mark. That's not supposed to happen. Uh oh, Nagano. Ooh, that usually means you're gonna have a really rough game. Losing a squad this early has so many little knock on effects and like little butterfly effects. Oh, that's so rough. Damn, man. Nagano actually just taking a pretty bad fight there. That looks rough. And now it's going to be lieutenant tech for Nagano. The Fusilier K98K does less damage. Uh, the only thing that's better than, than Volks is their far accuracy. Ah, okay. They scale similarly to conscripts with huge utility, flares, and DPS instead of survivability. Okay. Very interesting. And of course, I imagine once the G43 upgrade comes out, then they are similar, if not better. They must be better than Volks with the G43 upgrade, right? I feel like that has to be a true. It's 
Interesting that they get the 100 munition double panzer strike um, outfit now as well. Wow. Losing that early squad of riflemen, that is such a momentum change for the American forces. They just play differently if something like that happens. And the Stuka smoke pots you can hear they're readying up. Flak half track is going to be the choice here off of this battle gripper opening for Rajan. And platoon, uh, me mechanized platoon command post is coming, so going to be a Stuart build here, probably, almost certainly. They are often compared to double bar riflemen with G43s. Okay, wow, fair enough. Oh, Volk's Grenadiers, Rajan! Whew. Ah! They're still not out of harm's way, actually, but he he's going to get them out of there. That, that was a late fallback on those Volks, but it will be okay. The Battle Gripper HQ positioning is pretty interesting. Like, wow, what's going on here? That is literally out there. I hope this doesn't get punished. Panzer Fusiliers and... Oh, he throws the grenade. Oh, no! Nagano! Nagano! Oh, no! He's lost two squads of riflemen in six and a half minutes. Oh! Oh, that's gribbly, man. That's gribbly. We've got, we've got Panzer Shreks done already? Bro. That's pretty early. But, hey, at least I guess you're not going to get caught out by a Stuart, I guess. Flak half track shoves up, and now these riflemen have to run. Oh my goodness! He did pick up. No, he didn't actually. Yeah, he got the storm pioneers. Okay, he got the storm pioneers. I didn't. I didn't see exactly how aware those storm pioneers got killed while they were falling back, though. Okay, all right. Getting the storm pioneers basically puts Nagano back on the map. If you don't get those storm pioneers there, this game starts spiraling out of control. I think it can look really nasty if you don't get those storm pioneers there. But he does pick up a very expensive squad that the OKW player just can't actually really operate without. That is a mandatory, what are they now, 300 manpower tax? 300 manpower indeed will have to be spent on Storm Pioneers. You just can't play without a squad of them, once you have a vehicle at least. The fact that they're good in a fight also is a, is a, is a useful thing, but yeah, just Storm Pioneers just do too many good things for the OKW player. You, you, you cannot really play Company of Heroes 2 without at least one Engineer squad on your on your roster. You can try, but it, I don't think it's very good. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going to rebuy the Storm Pioneers, that makes sense. So this is a 300 manpower speed bump that Nagano is able to inflict on Rajan here. And that's great, because Rajan has already inflicted two 280 manpower speed bumps. Is that how much Riflemen are? Yeah, they're still 280. Cool. My knowledge of USF, like, turbo weak. What's up, Houston? Good morning and welcome. For, okay, I'll tell you what. USF are the exception. You're quite right, Aki HQ. You are quite right. USF actually can get by without engineers because, for some reason, their vehicle crews actually are not surgically implanted into their vehicles, and they are able to leave and repair the vehicle. And that's pretty awesome. Having said that, though, it is kind of weird to try and play the game for that long without a metal detector. So I would say it is difficult, though. Even even for USF, it's difficult. You do really want a rear esh squad with a metal detector. Flak half track here actually gets a nice engage on the Stuart. So that's a uh, that's a nice thing. Panzer Faust toting, Panzer Fusiliers as well are gonna are gonna guard that uh, that flak half track. Oh no, he kind of wastes the Fausts into the rear esh there. Oh well. Feet can be used as minesweeper. <sighs> Dark, but yeah, I mean, not wrong, I suppose. Yeah, I've heard of Iron Harvest. It looks really interesting. Um, I'm hearing very mixed things about it at the moment, but it's early days for that one. You know, as long as the game engine is solid, balance can follow. Obviously, it's nice if your game is in a good state play-wise when it launches, but that can follow. Um, but yeah, I'm very interested in Iron Harvest because it has a lot of outward similarities to Company of Heroes 2. The games look similar. The games fr frame similar action. Um, so I really hope that Iron Harvest is good. I'm very interested in it. But I haven't made my judgment and I don't know enough about the game really. 
I'll be honest, <laughs> the game that I'm probably the most weirdly excited about and playing definitely the most is Command & Conquer Kane's Wrath. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's half price right now on Steam, by the way, if anyone wants to go and pick it up. You can play it online if you get CNC online installed and working. And, like, Jesus Christ, that's such a fun RTS to play. It's just so good. Anyway. Black Half Track here going to be uh, holding the line as this American push tries to come through north. The Stuart having a hard job finding any effect with the Panzer Fusiliers with Shreks patrolling, looking for it. And that Flak Half Track as well, able to chip in damage. CNC Remastered is amazing. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that too. But the thing is, CNC Remastered, it, it's a remaster of a very old game. And back then, RTSs were just worse. So that's the thing. CNC Remastered, though it is very fun and very nostalgic to play, you cannot sit there and pretend it's a better RTS than like pretty much anything more modern because because it, it's not it's fun and it is cool and you can do you can play it at a high level and stuff like that but it is not as well designed as Command and Conquer 3 or Command or even Company of Heroes or StarCraft or StarCraft 2 or like 0K those are all better RTSs it's just that CNC Remastered is just bloody charming and hilarious fun and even though it's not as good it's not a bad RTS it's it is it rewards all of the right RTS things it's so cool it's no homeworld no I mean, Aki HQ, you heard some people playing it without nostalgia and said it's not very good. It is exactly what it is. It, it is a game from the 90s being re-released today. And I've seen some people playing it and getting really frustrated with it. Like, really frustrated with it. I watched a couple of StarCraft 2 pros streaming it. And they were just like, this game's such bullshit. Engineers are ridiculously OP. What the hell's going on with that? Like, why is why is the unit pathing so goddamn terrible? And it's like, well, because it's a game from the 90s, man. Like, the AI and the engine is not there for... You have to make sure your units drive the right way yourself. Like, if you can't just tell a unit to go somewhere and expect it to get there in a logical way, it won't do that. You have to babysit, like, everything. And that's just how it is. If, I mean, if you want a modern RTS, don't play a game from the 90s. Like, you know, if your complaint is... A lot of people are finding it really frustrating, and that's because it's an RTS from the 90s. If you wanted something else, you shouldn't have bought a remastered RTS from the 90s. Like, that's the truth. If they changed it so that the units had good pathing, then no one would be interested, because it wouldn't be a remaster. It would just be a bad RTS at that point. Like, It probably will improve because of modding, yeah. It probably will. So, Nagano's actually substantially recovered from what was a fairly rocky start. Picking up those Storm Pioneers was a good start into that, and now the Rep and Racks are done. American forces are actually putting on decent amounts of pressure across the board. The scoreline situation is closing back up again. And if you look at the top left, look at the top right, it's no longer absurdly clear that Nagano got off to a terrible start and Rajan is in the ascendancy. These are two armies that are fairly well matched. I'm a little bit concerned about the lack of AT for the American player, but at the moment there's only one flak half track, so it's not crucial, it's not critical. But as, as things go on, we might need to see a captain or uh, just something because I feel like AT, the lack of AT could be a problem moving on. I know we've got the Stuart, and I know there's probably going to be Zooks popping up on rear esh and stuff, but we've seen time and time again that's actually not enough AT. So. Uh, that's the one thing I hope that the Nagano addresses moving forward. So now Schwerpanzer HQ is just now finishing. And that means that we'll have Obersoldaten, most likely, given that we've got Obersoldaten bulletins. And then we'll probably have uh, Panzer Authorization and something nasty coming out there. In fact, we're stacking a lot of fuel here as the OKW player. So this could be a quite a timely Panzer IV. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, not super timely. We are 14 minutes in, but like... Yeah, just a fine moment for a Panzer IV to come out. Major tech is actually done. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we're not doing Captain tech anytime soon. Fair enough. The fuel income, not terrible for Nagano, so we could definitely have a Sherman out in time to help. Um, or we could save a little bit for a Jackson here. The Sherman's always a risky proposition, though, especially against OKW. This 50 cal in a crucial position has been providing so much value for Nagano from there. He's going to pivot it here and he's going to catch a load more Axis squads. Smoke is forced actually off of the half track. And then he's going to attack ground the uh, the 50 cal. That's nice. 
Is Nagano paying attention? Ooh, incend oh, that's a frag grenade. Okay, he will get the 50 cal out of there. Uh, the M the 76 mil could be nice against the Panzer IV. Eh. Enemy okay, Houston. Have fun, my friend. I hope work goes okay for you. You can uh, catch the VODs on YouTube, my friend. Have a good day. Did Rajan place any mines? Uh, I haven't actually seen any shoe mines now. Just having a quick pan around, but I don't want to miss the action. Whoa, the Stuart's coming in back first. Uh, that's awkward. What are we doing? That is not the correct way to operate a uh, Stuart. And it gets quite punished. AT grenade. Oh, God. Nagano, what? <laughs> not quite sure what that Stuart was trying for there. <laughs> hmm. That feels bizarre, but uh, he's going to lose his light tank for it. And that was not a unit that we really wanted to just give away. Uh, hmm. I feel like there was some kind of misclick or like something went catastrophically wrong there. <laughs> That's a very unusual way to lose your light tank. Um, I, I'm a little bit sort of sorry in a sense for Nagano that we just happened to catch that one straight on stream. But, you know, these things happen. This is live Company of Heroes 2. These, 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 these boys are playing with the safety off. Too much vodka for lunch. <laughs> Possibly, mate. You know, something like that. Um, and uh, it's going to be a little, little, little present exchange here. A little gift exchange. Oh, no. Not the Lieutenant. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> hmm. We have lost a lot of units here, haven't we, Nagano? Rajan is putting on quite a stalwart display here. Just picking up value wherever it can be found. And sort of clinically dealing with Nagano here. So, uh... So this is a pretty rough spot to be in. Now the Panzer IV is going to be the choice. It is on the queue. And there is precious little in terms of preparation here for this Panzer IV for the American player. We don't have Captain Tech. We don't have any AT guns. We don't have a tank. Um, we've got three sources of anti-tank grenades to deal with a Panzer IV. And that's going to be tough. Okay, so it's, it is going to be a Sherman 76. There we go. All right. Hmm... I mean, we've seen it before. The Sherman 76 is a good tank, but it is actually still not quite a match for the Panzer IV. All things being even, the Panzer IV just is slightly superior um, in terms of accuracy, penetration, armor. I believe, in terms of all those things, at least. So, um, this Sherman is going to be a useful tool, but probably not an answer by itself for what Rajan is bringing to the table here. And... Uh, <coughs> Pardon me. Whoa, we got a rifle grenade into the camera there. Did you guys see that? That rifle grenade came like right into the camera. That was pretty cool. And uh, Panzer IV is here now. This flak half track as well has been pretty good this game, hasn't it? Actually, it's just been doing pivotal things throughout most of the game and being well looked after by Rajan. It's nice to see. Here comes the Sherman 76. Whoa, that Panzer IV, like, raising its barrel all the way to the max there. The Sherman 76 will get the opening shot here. No, this line of sight blocker. Woo! Okay, he gets the rear armor on the Panzer IV, though. That's What is going on here? Oh, no, turning the Panzer IV in that direction was really bad. Now the Sherman 76 gets a great start in this fight. Where's the Kettenwerfer? Oh god, the Kettenwerfer scrambling to get in the position. The Panzer IV on death's door. He doesn't have any Panzer attack or anything. <gasps> Sherman 76 rolls a crucial miss at an absolutely vital moment. Gets tagged by a Faust. Now starts getting hosed by Flak. There are Kettenwerfer looking for shots here. Going to get set up and go for an attack ground round. Nice hit. Could go for another. Is he going to get another? Come on, go for it. Oh, he gets it. He gets it. And that might be game. I mean, it's it's not looking great for Nagano here. I mean, you don't have to concede, but you are heavily behind. Having said that, though, actually, Nagano has 50 tickets of time to work with in terms of the scoreline. And actually, I've seen this style from Nagano before, where it looks like Nagano is getting shredded, but Nagano just somehow finds a way to control the victory points and stay ahead and actually just navigates the game to a win. Picks off an AMG-34 there as well, actually. That's quite nice. This flat half-track just doing work. Jeez, going up to three stars of veterancy. So now it's a little bit more sprightly to move. Uh, careful, bro. There's a 50 cal here. Let's not let's not overextend. There we go. Um, and the MG34 can and should be. There we go. Remand. There we go. 
the fire rate on the 76 Sherman is pretty rapid, isn't it, Aki HQ? But it wasn't enough. And now, this is... Okay, so he does have to side tech into Captain. I mean, this is painful but necessary. And, and having another officer squad on the battlefield is going to be useful here. Pardon me. That's actually definitely useful. Oh, it gets the 50 cal. I mean, that, that can be recruited immediately, but it's nice to just wipe the experience and force your opponent to have to waste the manpower getting that thing back operational. So, a nice pickup there. This black half track has looked instrumental. It uh, seems very good in this game. He's going to pick up the captain here. He's just going to force that one back. Hey, bro. Oh, no, actually, he has no line of sight. Okay, here comes the line of sight. A dump, 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 dump. And the captain will be forced out of there. A little bit of splash damage hitting onto these uh, OKW squads there. Careful there, Mr. Flak Half-Track. Uh, but it's all okay. Obersoldaten finally getting added into the roster. And that seems like if they are able to get any kind of veterancy and an LMG-34, that could almost be the checkmate piece of this composition now. Because if you can force... If your infantry just flat out beats the American infantry in a fight, I just don't see how Nagano can do anything. Desperately trying to pick up these Panzer Fusiliers. And that's a nice attempt, but won't be able to get them. And now the Panzer IV is here to control everything again. So I'm sorry, but your infantry will be declined. And actually, he's you know, still pushing forwards. Kettenworth are perhaps in jeopardy here. But the, the, the Panzer HQ is here, so you cannot push too far. A brave squad of Panzer Fusiliers with Shrek's going to be facing off against some rear ash with Zooks. Never were two more ill-equipped squads pit pitted against one another. Uh, smoke comes down off of the... Uh, oh, he's going with the infrared STGs. Sweet. It's going to be an infrared STG game. Wicked. What are they called? The vampire scopes or something. Panzer IV here pushing in. Infrared STGs are done, but the Obersoldat are under the arc of the 50 cal. Oh, M1 at the back. M1 at the back. Gotta watch out for the flak half track. <gasps> he gets the flak half track at last. That flak half track has been such a thorn in his side. So the side tech into captain immediately paying. Volks Grenadier get picked off as well. Rajan losing a couple of key units in a matter of moments there. Nagano getting some crucial work done. That is nice to see. Rajan definitely still in the ascendancy, but looking a lot weaker now that the flak half track is removed. And those Volks Grenadiers as well. That's pretty big. And we probably don't really want to have to worry about replacing those. I mean, we just don't want to. Oh, hello, what is this doing out here? Err... Uh, I guess we're thinking about completing the tech tree and possibly setting ourselves up for a KT. Seems like a weird time to do it on the commander who has regular Tiger, though. Unless you actually really want that, that Battle Gripper H... Uh, sorry, that Mechanized Reg. It's not like you need it for the repairs. Your Storm Pioneers are dealing with this Panzer IV absolutely fine. Yeah, Strelok, it is sort of testament to Nagano's skill that this game still looks good after having taken such a beating. The triple cap, though, is going to be the real problem. So we'll see what Nagano is able to do here. And, like, in games in the past that I've seen Nagano win, even when it looks like he's losing loads of units, he's basically always stayed ahead somehow in terms of the victory points, and there is a considerable deficit there. So th this, I think, is going to be a very big ask. But, yeah, Nagano clearly an amazing player, and still, despite losing a lot of units, holding on and looking... Looking scary still. As as German forces pour over the river, though, the uh, Allied defenders doing their best, but it's rough going out here. Where's the Panzer IV? Okay, he's reorientating it and going to get it into the fight. I was going to say this looks like a, a fight where you probably do want the Panzer IV. Where's the M1 AT gun? Oh, okay. That M1 AT gun is so exposed. Oof. There's a world where that M1 AT gun gets gets punished. There. Oh, he's up to two squads of Obersoldaten now. Oh, how about that? He only lost the Volksgrenadiers to free up unit cap for Obersoldaten. That's the truth. 
Uh, are we going to see a second set of vampires? That would be nice. Oh, the captain died as well? Thanks, Aki HQ. Good catch. Yep, he did. And it's going to be another Sherman 76 here. Rear Ash on the chopping block. Panzer Fusilier is firing, but unable to pick up the squad. These vampire Obersoldaten are going to be ripping up these uh, these riflemen. On death's door, Obersoldaten firing with vampires. They're going to get away. Those guys were one-hit status, though. That was close. Rajan is pretty trash. Hot take. How the hell is uh, Nagano losing to him? Well, by getting off to a really bad start, essentially, that's why this game looks pretty close. And for all that Rajan may or may not be trash, in this sample of one, Rajan has been playing well. You know, the micro on the flak half track has, was decent. You can get both tigers. Of course you can, Datton. I'm not saying it's good, but you can do it. It, you, that way you have so many of your eggs in, in a very similar looking basket. Can you not Aki HQ? I'm sure you can. You can't get them together? Really? Oh, they changed the heavy tank limit to one. Is that right? Huh. I didn't actually know that. I didn't actually know that, except for the Storm Tiger. Oh, well, that makes sense. I mean, the Storm Tiger is hardly a tank. Um... Oh, okay, fine. I actually didn't realise that there was a hard limit on heavy tanks. Okay, so it's either Tiger 1 or Tiger 2. There you go. I mean, I honestly prefer the Tiger 1 because it's a little bit faster. Yeah, thank God we're limited to one Storm Tiger. Can you imagine how, how horrible, how miserable it would be to play against two Storm Tigers? I would just be like, I have no interest in playing this anymore. GG, on to the next game. <laughs> that would not be a fun thing. Having said that, though, the prospect of playing with two Storm Tigers, hmm, that I could sign up for as a prolific Storm Tiger abuser. Wow, look at this, actually, splitting the Obersoldat and one Vampire, one LMG-34. Actually, he's going to push in hard here, wants the AT gun, of course. Look at how, look at how good Obersoldat are against infantry, particularly against weapon teams. Pineapple comes down, splashes the veteran, the, the elite Obersoldat, and for a lot of damage, the riflemen get the Obersoldat and squad with the Vampires. I reckon Nagano's kind of turning this now. He's picked off so many squads over the last few minutes. And Rajan does does not have the manpower to be replacing these units. So this is like actual proper losses. It's possible if you shoot at your own Storm Tiger with a Puma as it reloads, then you can decrew it and call in a second one before crewing it. Aki HQ. That's like the most beautiful suggestion I think I might have ever heard. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to try and do that. That's amazing. You're right, of course, it would work. Yeah, you can call in the other one if your King Tiger or your Tiger dies. Yeah, it is a nifty way in a way of like, in a sense of like circumventing the, um, the, the 180 second like clock, if you like. Mmm, Rajan falling from grace here. Triple cap for the United States forces. Whoa, come on, lag spike. And the scoreline basically even again. Double Sherman 76 will soon be here. Still only one Panzer IV. Not enough fuel for a big cat yet. Not enough manpower. Not even close. And the manpower desperately needed, to be fair, to replenish the heavy casualties suffered by this German infantry roster. So... Rajan in a rough spot all of a sudden for having dominated so long. You know, you give Nagano an inch, he will take a mile, and Nagano firmly with his foot in the door. And uh, looking for more. And here comes another, here comes that second, second uh, Sherman 76. The second? The second sermon. Now there is still a two-star Panzer IV, and that is fierce. It, that will help, but you've got to be careful, man. Two Sherman 76s, that's real. And they are heading up here, looking pretty angry. They want to fight the Panzer IV. And what is this? What is this we've just called in? Oh, he's got the tank commander. Oh, okay, he uses a uh, tank commander artillery barrage there. The Ober dying was huge, yeah. Obers are a long-term investment, and if they can go on to get to three or more stars of veterancy, then 
American infantry, which is one of the greatest strengths of the faction, is like massively has a really hard time. Uh, but they got shot down before they were able to get there. Now there is still a squad of Obersoldat, and they can still start vetting up and doing work, but obviously it's much scarier with two. And it's kind of a shame that we lost the cool vampire toting ones as well. Uh, so, okay. The Panzer IV are going to come in here. Oh no, but now it has to fight the two Shermans in its side armor. That doesn't look good. I think we wanted to wait on the Panzer IV there before we revealed it, but Kettenworth are doing a good job. This uh, one Sherman 76 is weakened up now, and the Panzer IV can fall back to... Oh, actually, we don't have the engineers done on the uh, mechanized regiment. Didn't realize that. That's annoying. Um, yeah, engineers actually not done on the mechanized regiment HQ. Does Rajan realize that? I don't know. Okay, Rajan is beginning to bank up manpower, though, now. We're clearly looking for a big cat. Which big cat? Well, that's up to Rajan. But, uh, I mean, they either one would be fine, to be honest. Honestly, Nagano should get pack howitzer and siege siege the Schwerpanzer HQ with it. Yeah, I, I like that. That sounds really smart. Uh, 76s are the ones that do not sw swap their shells. No, they're much more just like microing a Panzer IV. They're, they're much more in that regard. Easy 8s also cannot swap shells. It's both of them. Uh, yeah. Basically, the only one that couldn't swap shells is the is the stock standard Sherman. Oh. The Americans have cut! How dare they! It's these bloody Americans! And yeah, Rajan down at 163 under 216 now. The situation becoming a little bit urgent. He can call in a regular Tiger. But it looks like he's hellbent on the KT. I don't know about this. I just think the KT comes out later and time is an issue. You have to build the KT as well. Okay, I take it back. No, I forget. I always forget it's just a thing you press. All right, well, KT it is. And then it's going to be KT with Panzer IV. And there is not enough AT in this... Uh, sorry, there is not enough AT in this American army. Actually, he's got double M1 now. I didn't see that second M1 sneaking in until just now. Okay. Well, that's actually quite good then. And there's a little bit of a tank battle going on up here. What is this uh, What is this ability we have here? What is, what is going on with that? What is he using there? Is that combined arms? No. Why is, that, why is there a crosshair above this, above this Sherman? Somebody help me out. I can't figure that out. KT looking thick. I know, right? Radio net. Oh, it's the vet bonus. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rifle grenade. Where did that rifle grenade go? Oh, was that the scouting flare one? Oh, sick. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. That's the scouting flare. Thanks, guys. All right, KT going to lumber into position here. Both AT guns acquire the Panzer IV, though. That's an easy kill. And now the KT is just sitting in front of a lot of AT resources for the American player here, desperately trying to pick off an M1 AT gun. Won't get it. Here comes an artillery barrage. That's the tank commander barrage. And now the KT forced to turn tail. The Rakettenwerfer is just about correctly traversed. The Panzerstrecks are here as well, but these M4... Sorry, these, um, these Sherman 76 is just not dying. And the, I mean, trading out the Panzer IV there is brutal. I think losing the Panzer IV there was not an option. I think now with the Panzer IV gone, you can totally beat this composition with what Nagano has. You just have, you just have to fight where the King Tiger is not, right? The King Tiger cannot be on both sides of this river. So the Sherman 76s actually don't have to fight the Panzer IV. I'm oh, sorry, the, um, the KT necessarily. Uh, and even if they do, there's so much scope for them to be able to get around the back of it. He's building a third one. You know, this looks so bad for Rajan. 100 tickets and bleeding under 216. He is going to grab the VP. So he's going to stabilize, and you know, no game where the where the um, OKW player has a King Tiger with some support is ever over. But like, this is looking so rough here. Does he get the engineers yet? Oh, he still doesn't have engineers on the mechanized reg. That would be so useful. Oh god, he just lost another squad of Panzer Fusiliers. Oh no, and he loses the Kettenwerfer. Yeah, the wheels have fallen off the bus. There's no units left now for the German player, really. How do, how do you beat this? I mean, I know you've got a KT, but how do you actually win when... Does he... He, I mean, he went for the tank commander and not the pintle mount. I don't know about that. I actually think... 
I don't know. I really like the Pintle Mount MG on the King Tiger because it just feeds it veterancy, but may maybe that's a distant concern. I mean, it vets up slow anyway. But this, this game may is probably over now. I don't think you can realistically win. Yeah, the Sherman's Rumble. And there's just not enough left here. Nagano going to take another beautiful win. The KT is going to come in here from the hind quarter, but... Ah! You had to not shoot that shell, man. That was a time for hold fire. You had to go for the most damaged Sherman. You cannot be spreading damage across these Shermans if you want to win this game. You have to go for the wounded Sherman. So that was an extra shot from the KT needed before that Sherman went down. And, uh, I mean, these Shermans are not penetrating the frontal armor on this KT. Jesus, they're not penetrating. And he's going to come in here. Got to keep microing the KT. Look at the rate of fire on the Sherman 7. Got to turn it. You got to turn it. Oh, he's not turning it. Oh, he was too slow on the turn. That'll be a dead KT. Ooh, the armor on the KT is pretty good, eh? One more shot. There we go. He gets it. And that's game. Well played from Nagano. Wow. Holy spoons. That was pretty good. What a, what a game. I mean, that was awesome. Absolutely great. Uh, Rajan there getting off to a strong start, but Nagano demonstrating once again his skill and tenacity to come back from such a gross opening. Uh, and just... It was all going really well for Rajan until a couple of units just died. It was the flak half track and then suddenly the squad of Obers... No, Volks Grenadiers. And then shortly after the Obers with the Vampires went down. And that was the beginning of the end there for Rajan. And it was a slow death. But yeah, the Panzer IV got picked off like in a pretty bad way. And then not even the power of the King Tiger was enough to save the day. And it's amazing because that King Tiger almost survived in the base, but it didn't. How good is the front armor on a KT, eh? Who knows? With slightly different micro on that KT, he probably could have beaten that 76. Um, but he wasted a shot shooting for the the Sherman 76 that didn't have damage. Which means that he took a lot more damage when he was retreating with the KT because he was fighting more Shermans for longer. Uh, and then he didn't turn soon enough when the KT was in the base. If you turn sooner there, I think it's a lot harder for the Sherman 76 to get you. So, um, Wow. Well, there we have it. A fantastic batch of games today. Uh, a lot of them quite one-sided, but it do be like that sometimes when you cast from the live game ladder. And uh, for me, that's part of the thrill of casting live games, is that you do never quite know what you're going to get. Um, so, yeah, that was a, a fascinating a fascinating few games. Good to catch some top players in the wild plying their trade. And uh, to close out today's stream... We're going, to, uh, we're going to cast a game of Homeworld Deserts of Karak, which I've been meaning to do for a long time. We're going to be casting one game per stream now. Homeworld Deserts of Karak, for those of you who aren't familiar, is amazing. Is Moobot talking to you? Oh, I don't, I don't know why. Sorry, buddy. But um, yeah, Homeworld Deserts of Karak, for those of you who don't know, um, is just a fantastically good RTS. Uh, very well balanced, and it's much faster pace than Company of Heroes, so games are usually just much quicker. Um, so it looks like today we're going to have a game between Bozo Cow and A Game Anx on Kalash Teeth. So I'm going to load us on into that one now. And uh, yeah, this is just one of the best Arist RTSs out there. It got off to a rocky start because when it released, it didn't have support for multiplayer in the way that we're used to. Didn't have replays, didn't have a good ladder system. So competitively, unfortunately, this game never really took off. But there is a strong com competitive community now uh, operating through Discord with a good community balance sort of, um, well, community. It's being balanced by the players anyway, let's put it that way. So, um, right, let's go ahead and, whoops, oh god. Well, that doesn't work. Uh, okay, we're going to take a guess here, because I haven't actually cast Homeworld Deserts of Correct. I'm just going to take a guess that this layout is going to be non-offensive, having my camera in this position. Um, okay, so spawning in the south here, playing as the Galzian forces, it is going to be Bozo Cow. And spawning in the north, playing as the coalition forces, it is going to be A Game Anx. Uh, and uh, again, so for those of you who don't know, A Game Anx is um, a regular actually on the stream. We often have him in chat. He's at work at the moment. But uh, yeah, 
Uh, he's a pretty interesting guy, actually, who's into video game design and um, plays a lot of different video games, but is very good at RTS. I've watched him. I've watched him from first person because I've watched his st his stream when he plays uh, this game a couple of times, and I've even fought him on the ladder once or twice. Um, and I've never taken a win off him. It's never been close. He's just very good and. This map is kind of like A game's natural habitat. It's a small map, it's close and brutal. He understands all the variables and he is an absolute monster. Now, he is kind of playing off race in a way, um, insofar as I usually think of him more as a Galzian player. So, playing, uh, playing some coalition here, it's going to be very interesting to see what he's going to bring to the table here as I bring up the production queue. Now, for those of you who don't know, again, on, um, in the Homeworld Deserts of Karak, you can win by blowing up your opponent's carrier or. You can win by getting five artifacts into the extraction sites. So for a for a game here, the extraction site is here. For Bozo Cow spawning in the south, the extraction site is here. Now the artifacts, there are three that spawn on the map: one here, one here, and one here. And you can see the circle filling. That's the timer until the artifact spawns. And then you need a base runner unit, which is kind of like a utility truck that does a few other things. But one of the things it can do is pick up the um, artifact and take it to the extraction point. Also, for every artifact you secure. The um, you you get um, you get some power resources to make your carrier stronger. So the artifacts are actually useful beyond just ticking the scoreline. They do they have in-game effects as well. So you can see Bozo Cow coming forward with a couple of strike craft. These are sand skimmers, which are going to try and keep tabs on exactly what it is that A game is doing here. Going to get some scouting information. A game has some LAVs, which are the Coalition Strike Vehicle. Um, and there's a number of differences between these units, but there is about as much micro potential in a sand skimmer as there is in a mutilisk from StarCraft 2. So right from the first few minutes of the game, Homeworld Deserts of Karak is a very micro rewarding, skill intensive game. For reals, it really is. So, um, yep, that's pretty cool. So we've got Assault Ship Tech now done for Bozo Cow, and uh, the first Assault Ship going to be moving across the map. Armored Assaults are done, which is loosely the equivalent tech for Coalition Forces for A-game. So these little Armored Assault Trucks going to be moving on out here, and uh, going to start exchanging with the Assault Craft here. And uh, it's kind of weird to me that we're seeing A-game do a pretty low econ style. Is he building a support cruiser? Okay, now he's building the support cruiser. So... Definitely Bozo Cow has, 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 has refinery tech done. Yeah, Bozo Cow has refinery tech. So actually Bozo Cow with the economic leg up here. Slightly faster start here. And if he's able to hold off this poke from A game, which is not necessarily an easy thing to do. The little blue plus on the unit means that they're getting the high ground advantage. Um, yeah, it's not easy to do to beat A game in a fight. But um, So this is smoke, which the, uh, which the armored assaults can throw down. It's basically smoke as you're used to it from Company of Heroes. Think of it like that. Um, so two armored assaults is not going to hold this attack off though. Wow, especially not if you come out across the open. Look at Bozo Cow, he's keen for a fight. Now Galzian units do actually self-repair as soon as they're not in a fight. So he can keep doing this and trying to find some value. Yeah, Aki HQ, I feel you man. If you have any kind of a feel for RTS, you'll kind of know what's going on even though it's sort of foreign and a new RTS. But Homeworld does its crack as a very streamlined, intuitive RTS. It's very much what you see is what you get most of the time. So, uh, yeah, you can be you can play it quite intuitively. So, all right, let's check the tech here for these two players. So, a game's going into oh, actually he cancels missile battery. Okay, so missile battery is anti-air tech. Uh, Gals the Galsian player Bozo Cow has gone for actually nothing beyond assault ship tech. Okay, interesting. Mm, no interceptor fab or anything like that. So, yeah, these two players are playing a pretty low-tech game. So this is a base runner that's been loaded with an artifact. That's what the um, blue hexagon is. So one of the artifacts has been grabbed here by A-Game Anx, and he wants to try and get it into this extraction site to try and secure that one. Uh, A-Game also manages to get a probe on over here and scout what's going on. And if you manage to scout your opponent's carrier, you can tell by which little doodads are raised up on it exactly what they've researched. So A-Game now is getting some good information. In fact, it's probably this scout with the probe that means that A-Game could cancel that um, anti-air tech because uh, I guess he sees that the interceptor blob on the um, carrier isn't raised up. All right, so a mixed fight being taken here. One of the assault ships uh, from Bozo Cow goes down immediately, but it's go he's going to get a trade for an armored assault here. Nicely done. And the artifact will continue to be denied. 
I, I think Bozo Cow needs to be going for another production cruiser. Oh, and indeed they are. So Bozo Cow gets out this production cruiser, and that's essentially going to be the third mining location. So the production cruiser here is going to come out. It's going to take some shots at this probe, which is nice. We want to get rid of that. There it goes. And then uh, going to come out here and um, move to this third location. Now Bozo Cow actually coming in for a bit of a poke here, pursuing this base runner. A game has no rail guns actually, so these these armored assaults can actually pursue as far as they like. Railgun tech is like the counter to these medium-sized units. Uh, it's a very long-ranged, very high-power solution. So, like, once you have railguns, it's much harder for your opponent to use these kinds of like medium, medium-armored units. If you imagine, imagine, imagine you're fighting with the technology that humans will have in like 30 years in the desert. It's all about line of sight and we're talking about deep in the desert in a continent sized desert where there's no no room for support so if you can put a rail gun on top of a on top of a sand dune it will command all of the space it can see as soon as an enemy unit enters that space it's going to be eating a rail gun slug and that hurts so that's kind of the mechanics of the logistics that's the guiding principle of desert warfare with slightly futuristic tech you just need to uh you just need to get rail guns into the correct positions to command the area but neither of these two players are actually researching railguns yet. And uh, not really, it feels like not enough nukes. Ha! Uh, I mean, you can get nukes. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you can get nuclear cruise missiles in this game. They're going to happen. Well, they, they could happen. The Coalition get the uh, nuclear cruise missiles, so... Man, this has been the most passive game between these two, I have to say. Normally on Kalash Teeth, which is a super aggressive map, actually. That's, that's, not, that's not how it's playing out today. Both players being very respectful, macroing up, going up to the maximum, accessing all three of their resource locations before deciding to engage, and just playing a very respectful, laid-back style here. This LAV here for A-game is getting so much scouting information. So the blue area is like the sensor coverage, so anything covered in blue or like the pink is like sensor network coverage for that player, so you get information about what's going on there. Systems offline. Carrier range systems online. Course mapped. Course marked. Advance. So kind of waiting for one of these guys to... Okay, so we've got missile ship fab coming from uh, Bozo here. So that's going to be anti-air. And A-game is just playing this so chill. He's actually stacking quite a lot of resources even. What are we building, A-game? Ah, oh, it's going to be uh, assault cruisers. Okay, so okay, A-game's gone through the assault cruiser attack. All right. That's going to be an interesting one to use here. I wonder why assault cruise attack though. All right, here come the uh, here come the um, assault ships here from from Bozo Cow. A game's going to micro back his armored assault. Now the high ground advantage starts kicking in. So with one more smoke, we should be able to save this armored assault. No, actually. I wonder if Bozo Cow is going to push the issue here. But here comes the assault cruiser, and this will. This will handle the situation here. It has large laser cannons which can really take care of these assault ships. Yeah, assault cruisers are kind of jerks. They feel like they're the one unit that Coalition actually shouldn't have. So Bozo Cow angling here to try and get a, uh, an artifact out. He has a base runner loaded. 20 minutes in, Narian Artifact score. Gets a scanner into a nice position, actually. That's cool. And now... I mean, Bozo's got really good map presence and bring, going to be bringing forward the, the carrier now. Uh, researching power reserves. So Bozo Cow weaponizing the carrier. And the Galzian carrier is one of the most terrifying in a fight. Because it's so fast, it can come in and out of a fight just like, like carriers shouldn't be able to do. And it repairs itself very rapidly as well, or at least it can if you allocate your power resources correctly. So, The carriers in this game have four different systems that they can power up and down, and different races have different systems. But the Galzian carrier has carrier engines and uh, regeneration as like two of the most crucial things that it can do. And so it is a brute in a fight. But it's so scary because it's actually incredibly fast once you have enough power reserves to use it. No, they're not a coalition unit. No, I mean, I think they, they literally stole the tech from the Galzians. Uh, 
And okay, so Bozo Cow does take the lead. It's one to zero now and is occupying A Game's extraction site. A Game comes in for a bit of a dive with this assault carrier to try and buy time. So this is purely a time buying measure to try and disrupt mining and buy time. But th this assault cru cruiser will not be making it out alive. And also going to be making use of this distraction to get an armored assault through mid here. Railgun tech is finished for Bozo. So finally we have a, a railgun out. Uh, and the other assault cr cr carrier going to come through on the left. Sorry, assault cruiser going to come through on the left flank here. A-game poking, looking for damage. But both of his assault cruisers are in jeopardy now. The assault ships from Bozo Cow are going to chase, and they should. He's got this. He's got this cruiser on its last legs, and boom! That cruiser going to shatter down into the sand. And that one gets taken out. Meanwhile, on the eastern flank. Things also looking kind of grim for A-game, which I am super not used to saying. Bozo, cow friend, you have been practicing, because goddamn. A-game, it is indeed Homeworld. More, moreover, it's Homeworld featuring you. You are kind of getting beaten by Bozo Cow right now. What the hell? This is like Bozo Cow has been practicing, because he is playing really well. And now this, this assault cruiser on death's door. The assault ships and the mothership chasing it down. The heavy railgun chipping in damage. Heavy railguns have an effect called armor shatter. So when they hit a target, its armor gets permanently... Well, not permanently. It gets temporarily degraded for a while. So hitting something with a railgun and then following up with attacks from another unit is a, a synergistic thing to do. Okay, now A-game researching power reserve level 4. The coalition carrier coming forward. With power reserve level 4, we'll have access to most of its weaponry. And what's the endgame tech going to be here for Bozo Cow? Looks like it's siege cruisers. And A game is actually researching, art uh, is building artillery cruisers, so that will help a lot. Is the first artillery cruiser out? Not yet. So artillery cruisers are a really powerful indirect fire support platform, which will make life hell for all of these units that are sharking around mid. That, um, Bozo Cow has. So here, this is the artillery cruiser out now. The base runner gets shot down, but it's 2 0 now. Bozo Cow sacrificing a base runner to pick up another artifact. That's going to be worth. He's behind in the power reserve level war at the moment, so if A game is able to, uh, to take a carrier fight in the next few minutes, it will probably favor A game, but actually, A game will not be able to take a carrier fight anytime soon because there are four heavy railguns garrisoning mid here. So this artillery cruiser has a lot of work to do. Up to two artillery cruisers now. A good start for A-game, but siege cruisers from Bozo are on the way, and that will begin to answer the threat. There's still two assault cruisers as well. The assault ships are going to push through, and a team of sand skimmers are going to push through to try and access the artillery cruisers and expose them. The, the laser cannons on those sand skimmers will be good enough. Some, how many attack upgrades? No attack upgrades done yet. Wow, okay, crazy. But this assault cruiser is substantially flustered. The micro from Bozo on point as he starts picking off the assault vehicles. The assault ships go down, and there's just not quite enough DPS left on these SAM skimmers. A worthy attempt here from Bozo Cal, but it won't actually be enough. But now he has his own siege cruiser, and he's going to take up a position here in mid. The barrage coming down in a great location. That's the focus barrage. Oh, one of the artillery cruisers on death's door. We just need some scatter to pick that one up. Bozo Cow finding such efficient value here. Another siege cruiser finishes just in the nick of time. We need that barrage to come out right now. And Bozo Cow applying so much pressure. I was just going to say, if he can apply some pressure through this through this route here, I don't see how A Game can defend that. And sure enough, he's sending two heavy railguns and an assault ship. I love it. Look at the sensor coverage as well. Just has units in all the right places. Is there some kind of. I don't know, A-game. I think A-game might be in a bad p position here. I don't know. Unless this is an, an overextension. If, if, if Bozo Cow overextends with this carrier, A-game actually still has better power reserves. Considerably better. So the carrier is going to engage unsupported. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, this is the only way you can lose the game, Bozo Cow, is by getting into a carrier war that you can't get out of. I don't know about this. Railguns are hitting into the um, coalition carrier, though. That's going to help break the armor. The siege cruisers are hitting it as well. Siege cruisers are very effective against carriers because they're such big targets that the scatter on that artillery is like... Oh, God! And the Galzian carrier just chewing down all of the assets back here. Gets the artillery cruiser, gets a railgun, starts eating into the support cruisers. And A-game's carrier on its last legs now. The railguns hitting home for massive damage, taxing that carrier as it desperately tries to retreat. The assault cruiser is going to reposition, but it's not enough. Looks like A-game is going to go for a desperate backstab with what, what few resources he has left on that flank. 
but the real story is that his carrier is still in jeopardy and he's still taking railgun hits. A tactical nuke comes down and that's going to take out the cruise missiles. But I don't know that it's enough because A-game's carrier is still weak. It might be enough. The Galzian carrier is now taking a lot of fire and there are four railguns up at the back here. So actually I think A-game is stabilizing. The railguns are going to push, sorry, the, um, the artillery cruisers are going to push through trying to find the railguns. A barrage comes down but it won't find the damage that was needed and the Galzian carrier here is actually going to have to retreat. And so he puts power, he should put power into engines and regeneration here in a second. He has to move his siege cruiser as well. Bozo Cow overextending at a critical moment, and A Game's backstab is actually bearing fruit here. Okay, it's getting destroyed a little bit, but he's picking off, he's doing damage to harvesters, and look how many units he's tied up. These units would be so good if they were on the front, but they're kind of inactive because they've been tasked to come back here and deal with this. Oh no, look, he even has to pack up this mining operation and send it packing. Meanwhile, the Galzian carrier still on low health still taking railgun rounds here 29 percent health he needs to pipe power into regeneration and engines oh god he's taking hits but he has three artifacts so bozo cow's position not unplayable here i just worry that a game has done enough damage to stabilize these strike craft have been a game is just finding value because the thing is bozo cow is fighting fires on his home field as well as losing this carrier war and that's a lot to be microing that's really tough to do and a game is mining now flawlessly off of three locations so a game has taken the lead off of this last play and he's pushing he's pushing through mid he is angry he has a, a very weaponized carrier being supported by three support cruisers he has kind of enough money for another tactical nuke which is being reloaded the Galzian carrier repairs itself very rapidly though, so it is doing that, gaining like, what is that, 75 HP per tick at the moment. And is repairing itself, ooh, he's gonna commit it to the fight, no! Bozo Cow, you can't commit to the, can't commit to the fight now, man, he's got too many railguns. I think A-game has unstoppable force here. What a game though. I, I don't want to call it over yet, but it's looking very hard for Bozo, who desperately needs to play for time. It's all about playing for time now. Does he have Sandskimmer raiding? No. If you had Sandskimmer raiding plus upgrades, you could definitely go for a backstab and take out the infrastructure of A game. Uh, the missile ship comes in for a barrage, and that's going to be some nice damage. The siege cruiser, as the siege cruisers as well, also going to put down their missile barrages over here, just looking for damage. But A game going to deftly dodge it actually, so that's nice. Yeah, pretty unlucky spread there on the artillery cruiser shells for uh, Bozo Cow. The Galzian carrier now repaired, and Bozo has a couple of railguns, which might not be doing that much damage, but it does shatter the armor on these units, so it, it will help a lot in a fight, just having a few of these railguns alive. Sandskimmer is going to come through for something of a an attempted backstab, but there's an armored assault here waiting. The chain gun on the armored assault whoops, um, suppresses uh, strike craft, so um, it will uh, counter these units really well. It's, it slows down their movement. And if you slow down their movement, then you can kill them. Okay. An uneasy pause here, but A game is getting more money faster than Bozo Cow, and has the scarier standing army, and has the more weaponized carrier. He has power reserve level 5 done, and he's getting heavy vehicle armor 3. Whereas. Bozo Cow only has power reserve level 4, and that is a huge difference. Now, Bozo Cow, that difference is somewhat eaten away out. Bozo Cow does have three artifacts in the bank, so that's going to help, but I just don't see that he really has the resources to try and take a fight here. Here's what I think you need to do, Bozo Cow. There's no point holding this area, it's not great. Retreat round here, use the siege carriers from this position to pile damage onto the carrier, and if you need to, deny the extraction site. And just try and hold this location for a moment. Because I feel like trying to fight here is a bad idea. Because now A-game, if you fight here, A-game can bring all his railguns to bear. And the, the force disparity is going to be way too much to overcome. Okay, so railguns here from uh, Bozo Cow in a beautiful position, piling fire into the support cruisers, which are the medics of this army. Tactical nuke comes down, and that's going to try and find these railguns. Guns. And it only gets two this time. Bozo Cow sees it coming and gets a pretty nice split there. And now it's carrier versus carrier as the Galzian carrier. No power into regeneration though, and he's getting absolutely he's getting pounded right now. The assault cruiser is gonna wail in as well. 
And a backstab is going to be attempted here for Bozo Cow, but it's just not enough. There's just not enough units, and there's just not enough going on here. I mean, he's stinging this carrier down, and the artillery cruisers for Bozo Cow actually finally get a decent barrage there, finding a couple of the railguns, splashing some damage onto the sport cruisers, but it's like, it's, it's everything here is on death's door, but none of it is dead, so that's not very efficient for Bozo Cow. The Galzian carrier actually just going to hit and run, do what the Galzian carriers do so well. Look how scary the Galzian carrier is when it has all power into engines. It's so stupidly fast. And then if it can just get a bit of time to itself, it can repair itself ridiculously quickly as well. This is why it's so, so threatening of a thing. And, but, but now a game just has mid middle of the field and the support cruisers will repair everything. And I just don't see a, a route to victory here. The railguns are going to transition back into the north of the map here, and that'll be a kill. A game Anks going to take a sweet victory in just a little over 22 minutes here. A back and forth game there. Bozo Cow probably playing the best I've ever seen from him. I got to be honest. Bozo Cow has clearly been practicing because that was a sick game. Nice, good game. Trying to beat A game Anks on Kalash Teeth is like I don't know. It's like, I'm trying to think of a suitable, like, comparison, a suitable analogue. It's, it's, it's like trying to beat the Russians at Stalingrad, or only that's not even a suitable analogue, because they, they very nearly got beaten. It's like trying to beat someone who's very good out on their home turf, and that game was so close. What a game. Wow. Well, that was a great game of, uh, that was a great game of, uh, Homeworld Deserts of Karak, and um, we're going to be having one of those now at the end or at some point in uh, each of the following streams that, uh, or each of the streams, so because it's just a game that I love and it's a game that I enjoy casting and it's one of the best RTSs out there, so even those of you who are not big fans of Homeworld Deserts of Karak I hope you enjoyed that, it's even if it's not the RTS for you, I hope you can appreciate that it is a great RTS and it's really engaging and action packed and just kind of exciting to watch, so um uh, Bozo Cow is a beast and he beats you very often. Wow, I mean, I can kind of believe it having seen that game, A game. Um, uh, and thanks for casting Deserts of Correct. No problem, man. I love casting Deserts of Correct. The problem has always been finding the replays, but now that you've done that for me, it's much easier. So, um, yay, thank you very much. Um, great, sick, sick games today. A fantastic Company of Heroes 2 and a very entertaining Deserts of Correct game there. Unfortunately, I must now depart. I have to go and get on with my day. I've got many missions to run, and then I've got some nice, uh, some some nice stuff, some fun things to do this evening as well. So, really looking forward to that. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. This has been another midday magpie. The schedule once again for next week is going to be this as follows. So Monday, I will be casting at midday. That actually is not quite correct. Let me just change that. I, it'll, it's at eleven hundred hours GMT. There we go. So on Monday, I'll be casting at 1100 hours GMT. That's Midday Magpie, which you know and love. And Wednesday and Friday, I'll be casting in the evening, starting at 1700 hours GMT. So uh, that's the lineup for next week. We'll be casting Company of Heroes 2. We'll be casting Homeworld Deserts of Karak. And we'll be doing whatever else I feel like. Um, possibly even playing some uh, Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath, because good God, I'm loving that game at the moment. It's, it's like addictively good. <laughs> anyway... Um, thank you very much everybody for tuning in uh, thank you very much for all the support thank you very much for helping me stay sane in lockdown it's been awesome and this is uh, this is the end of another stream I will catch you all on Monday what do I normally say now this for now Magpie 42 signing out there we go